Twitch. Alright, so I'm going to set the Jesus used to do this, and he doesn't do it anymore. It's kind of just like a uh, pickup video. Put on my my big headphones too. Just.
Yeah. Hold on, let me just. Can you hear me? It's very we are the live on the Game you. Junction podcast. Live, live, live. What's up, everyone? Coming so, to you live. It... Live so, with all our problems. Uh, we have. <laughs> oh, I know. Always. Marcus frozen again. So gotta love it. Uh, yeah. What, what do you, What do you guys want to start off with this week? We've got uh, we a crazy news week going on. Um. Tons and tons of stuff. It's too much news to cover. We're not gonna be able. To, we're not gonna be able to cover it all in, in two hours. This yeah, might, this might be like yeah. three yeah, hour we podcast. The Tokyo Game Show, right? We have Tokyo Game Show, the Capcom presentation, the Street Fighter event, uh, the Koei Tecmo event. I know there were some other things that happened, like the. Yeah, I was about to say yeah. There's one. a PlayStation then, Direct drop. Play PlayStation State of Play. I mean, it's just insane for this week. Or Nintendo like, Direct. Uh, yeah, yeah and Nintendo then of course, Direct yeah. is definitely the heavy one. But the only thing I didn't care about with the Nintendo Direct was they just they if if I saw one more farming for a farming game, I was gonna vomit. <laughs> I was just like, okay, that's enough farming games. There's uh, never enough farming games. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, that that was wild. People were talking about all those farm sims. The only one that that I would have cared about whatsoever would be the uh, remake for the story of seasons the remake for that um, old harvest moon game played that years ago that was fun but i kind of just passed over everything with that yeah i i, I typically but, pass over all the nintendo stuff in general these days i, I just didn't, it did none of it really appeals to me anymore as like an adult gamer in my in my mind these days i guess you know almost 48 or almost 40 years old 38 right now and it just I can't get into much Nintendo stuff at all, really. Unless it's the older yeah, my, stuff. My, my Switch is just sitting there as a tertiary system. Uh, the last couple of Nintendo systems I've had, the Wii, the Wii U, they've all just been my, you know, they've been the one that I go to occasionally, and it's usually usually something that's only an exclusive that I go there for. Mm-hmm. And I really don't care about portability that much. I have handheld systems, and if I want to get a handheld system, I'm going to, you know, I, I wouldn't mind having a, a Switch Lite, because it's a little, you know, a little smaller form factor as opposed to taking that great big thing around. But uh, my wife, you know, yeah. she she lends more toward that stuff. You know, like she she likes Kirby and Mario and things like that. I suck at Mario games, even though I like playing them. But I'm absolutely with you. Yeah, it's just I, I I'm not there anymore. Let that yeah. inner kid leave him. <laughs> I don't know. I I don't uh, don't feel the same way. I will say that. I don't care about the portability much for myself because I don't travel with video games anymore. I just don't. And if I am traveling, I'm too busy to be playing a game. Mm-hmm. I'm driving or, you know, whatever. I'd but say, no, yeah, I'd say my uh, Switch is my least played, well, my Xbox One is my least played console because I don't ever play it. But my Switch is hardly ever played, but when I do, it's for like a handful of Nintendo games that I actually really want to play. Yeah, like Metroid Dread you haven't played yet. I haven't even unra- I haven't even unwrapped mine. It's sitting back there on the shelf with with the wrapper still. I mean, my, mine gets used. It's just kind of periodic because depends on like what games I'm playing and if it's not a Nintendo title, I'm not gonna play it on the Switch. Uh, majority of my Switch games are still sealed too, just because I haven't got to them. But it's the same for every other system. Well, speak, so. Speaking I mean, of stuff that's getting ported over to the Switch, uh, No Man's Sky is actually I coming. Put this in yet? Oh, yeah, I did see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's really cool. I'm actually wondering uh, how well that's going to work because they put a lot of work into No Man's Sky since it came out. You know, it was it was one of those trash games when it came out, and they put so much work into it. It's mm-hmm. actually a really good game now, it and it's will. got. I don't know how yeah, they're going to pour all that over to Switch. There's no way they can put all that into the Switch. Well, I guess the it's it depends on the hardware because a lot of it's server based, so it's not like the yeah. whole game's got to be on the Switch. But then again, it depends on how the Switch is going to handle how good of an internet connection you have, as well as. Uh, right. Just how it's how the, the, the it's gonna display on it, I guess. I guess we'll find out. Right. But it's right. I I probably won't play it on the Switch though. I already have it on PC and then I have it on PlayStation, so right. I don't have the, the need to buy it for a third time. It's just cool right. that they are putting it to the Switch and that the hardware yeah. can handle it. It's crazy. I mean, well, like uh, you said, though, I just hope it, it's a good. Hopefully, they took their time when they're porting it over, so yeah. it's a good port. They made sure, hey, this can exactly. actually work. But I'm just gonna port over a broken version of this game. Yeah, uh, some of those ports that they brought over, I mean, uh, Witcher 3, it actually looks good. Um, 
you know, Skyrim's an old game, but just because of the, the amount of content, that's kind of wild. Um, Skyrim, you can ones. play Skyrim on a fridge. I, that's not impressive to me. <laughs> Skyrim is the new Doom, right? So, like, if you can't play Skyrim on it, is it really an electronic? It's on literally everything at this point. I, I never it, thought it really of it that is, way. Yeah. Skyrim is the new Doom. Yes, exactly. It is. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I've seen I mean, Doom you, played you know, on everything yeah. from, like, you know, like you said, refrigerators down what? to the damn uh, the scan guns at Walmart. <laughs> Have you, have you seen the the one where they're playing on the little birth, birth control screen? They put it on uh, that. I saw something about that. I, I think it was yeah, dude. Related, though. Or not? Okay. Right. I want to see yeah. somebody put yeah, it on a like game console now. Screen. It's like yes, that would all, be. Yeah, all I'm saying it. is, you know, that got really meta when a few years ago. I think it was the same time they announced the terrible Fallout 76, where where Bethesda's like, oh yeah, you can play this on an Alexa. Like, it got too <laughs> meta at that point. I, gotta die. I'm not gonna lie. I actually did play through that a little bit when I first got mine, and it was all right. Yeah. It was kind of neat playing like a, a walkthrough message or like a, you know, just a talking game like that. Just walking through the levels. Eat 600 cheese wheels. <laughs> oh my god! Pick up everything. Now I'm slow uh, walking. Pretty much. Walking simulators. Would you guys? Uh, we think about the uh, PlayStation VR2 stuff. Let's get into that a little bit. There's a lot to talk about there. I it's want it. It's actually the. No, you go. I want it too. Yeah. I so, want it. I want it. I want it. I'm pissed off that none of my PS4 VR games are going to play on it. They've made that announcement that none of the stuff is going to be cross compatible with the PSVR 2. Uh, but they do have like 13 launch titles coming out with the PSVR 2. I would really give a reason why, though. I. But what what's well, on the PSVR that you care to transfer over? Most of those are uh, terrible a, VR ports, anyways. Well, what I, I hate have, is they're going to be no they're going to sell you the same games. It's just going to be the VR PSVR two version of that same game. They're going to just revamp but it for as it work and then resell it to you. I guess at that point, why bother rebuying? Just just if you just keep both VRs and play it on the VR, and then if you want a new game, just get on the VR too. That'd be my approach at it because I don't mm-hmm. want to double dip on games where you could try to buy it used on eBay or something like yeah, five dollars. I can definitely see that. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I I saw sort of reasoning. They did. They put out a lot of tweets about it. Um, essentially, it's just like it's sort of like a, a brand new console. So mm-hmm. some of the thing, the technology they're using, I guess, wouldn't work right. Was their explanation? I, I don't really understand. But I think a lot of it is the hand tracking. It, it the way the hand tracking was on the the PS uh, VR original is oh, with those move controllers terrible. with the little dots on them. And then it now is, the new yeah. PSVR controllers for the PSVR 2 are going to be more like that Oculus style where, it, you know, it encompasses your hand and it yeah, actually tracks right. that way instead does of like the, a light motion. I guess the question is, I don't, I don't only ever played the PSVR. Does the Oculus have like a Joy-Con on it so you can actually move? Because that's like my big thing when I was playing on the VR. Like the last time I last game I played it was Borderlands 2 when they brought it to the VR. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you're pretty much like you're like skipping forward because there's no way to like. And okay. Actually move around so without in, using a controller. In my in my quest too, it actually has uh, thumbsticks in there, and a lot of the games have to where you can either motion move like that, where you skip move, so it's yeah. a little more don't um, like a visual. Like, it's more visual comforting for yeah. some people, so they don't get motion sick. Um, but they do have but it to where like, you can actually physically walk. You just push the thumbstick forward, and your character will like take steps and walk forward. Uh, one of the games I played, you had to move your arms thing. faster to run. So, like, you, you hold the thumbstick forward to walk, and you move your arms, yeah. and the character starts running in the game. So, I mean, they're, they're getting it. very immersive with it. Because when the P, the when the Borderlands 2 VR came out, it seemed kind of like a really bare-bones port. And without using the controller, like, I could only skip moving forward, which, like, now the Joy-Cons are pointless, pretty much. Because I, at least for me, I didn't like that. I want to still move naturally like you do when you're normally playing the game. I just want to be able to, you know, use the, the, the pointers and stuff, like that mm-hmm. shoot or whatnot. But, right. No, it's, it's, if, if, if the new PS has that, it definitely would be a massive upgrade, on, to my opinion. Yeah, the, I, with my experience, I definitely think the, uh, the Quest 2 is certainly better than the PSVR. But Hands they're, down. But they're hyping up PSVR to be, you know, a whole league above that. Uh, that's essentially their approach to it. So I have high hopes for it because I don't have the PSVR right now anymore. Um, it did kind of sit, but now I've got like 15 physical games for it, which is wild. I haven't even gotten to play, but uh, I, <laughs> it sounds like I'm going to have to get one of those too mm-hmm. again at some point. So 
Yeah, it's, I uh, just it's I wish they thing, could I, I wish it. they could cut that tether. That's my biggest thing with the with the PSVR is they still it's still going to be tethered to your console. You're not going to have a camera that you're going to have to face or anything like that. But you're still going to have that that, right. that still tethered. That feels like a like a, a they're just trying to save money on their end. So yeah, without here's the thing. I can see uh, that. The cost with like the with it not it being tethered to the console, um, you're going to lose a lot of the. Uh, how do I say, like, graphic fidelity. Yeah, your um, frame rate. You probably have like, a frame rate drop and everything yeah, like that. Yeah, everything's stuck well. with battery life so, and whatnot. It, it just depends on trade-off as well as graphics and battery life and whatnot. So my, my assumption is that they tried that, and it didn't work well. So that's probably they, why they're not They couldn't it. get it to work well. Obviously, some people or, can, yeah. but it depends on how much or you want to charge. Enough time. I, I just feel like, like it all kind of comes to a cost. They feel like if they charge too much, they're not going to sell as much. So just leave it tethered. They can cut the cost by a hundred, hundred fifty dollars oh, probably, sure. and they're more, more likely to just sell more. It just feels like, like did, it's cost. Did they announce? Did they actually announce the price of it yet, or no? No, 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 no pricing I'm just, yet. I'm just making I'm a guess on why. Five hundred. Because obviously, if you're, if you're leaving now. stuff wired in, wireless usually costs more just by default on a lot of stuff. So for it sure, would make sense. And we got Sean Imagine, in the chat. Yeah, we got Sean it. in the chat. Said he actually uh, he's a big fan of the PSVR. Uh, let's see. Maybe he said he, he, he understands shot. the reason why it doesn't work on the PSVR two, and he did mention that they do offer a uh, an adapter for your PSVR headset, your PS one VR headset to uh, adapt to the PS five. Yeah. So you can still use it on your PS five. You're just not going to be able to play the new uh, the new games with it. So is it gonna be? Is right. it gonna be the same headset? You could just get new Joy Cons and essentially be able to do it. No, got no, 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 complete new revamp. And no, I, I misunderstood what you're saying. Console. You're kind of you kind of made it sound like oh, you could boy. like swap, and I'm like, I, it doesn't sound like it would work. No, not that makes more sense. Because I don't think the PS VR works with the PS5. I never tried it, but I don't think it does. The PSVR, if you have the adapter, it does work with yeah, your PS5. Works. Oh, so you have to get an adapter. Yeah, correct. Well, that's free though. Yeah. It's it's free on the Sony store. You can yep. buy it. You, you just email Sony and there. they'll send you the adapter. You can actually use your PSVR on your PS5, and it does give it a little bit of a graphical boost. It does help it a little bit, but I mean, at this point, I've played my Quest 2 so much, I can I won't even plug in my PSVR anymore. Like I'll just wait for the PSVR 2 to come out. If I was ever gonna go back into VR, I would just stick with PC at that point. It's just um, it's more. Awesome. I gotta ask you, Tony. While I'm thinking of it, this is one that I've always wanted to try on there. Have you checked this out? I I got. Actually, like three copies of this but the uh, iron man vr have you tried this so i did try it when it came out on beta uh they gave you a free download that you could try it and i got sick as dog shit yeah. <laughs> flying around like that that and um um actually no man's sky uh was on there as well and yeah. just the something about the rocket packs in vr when i'm sitting because i try to play those games sitting down because i'll fall over if i don't but uh <laughs> So even just sitting down and like with that rocket pack and the motion of it, like I get instantly sick and I can't, I can't, I can't do them. Right, Scott, you have any uh, PSVR experience or I, anything to add into that? I, I've actually never had a VR headset on yet. Uh, I was actually going right. to buy one a couple of months ago because I actually saw one in a store in Toledo and I was like, ooh, and and then a. Uh, uh, a friend of mine was just like, "Don't buy that garbage." And I was like, <laughs> "I was." He was like, "If you're gonna buy anything, just wait or get an Oculus too." And I was just like, "Okay, all right." So I I backed off because there really wasn't a whole lot game wise. I wanted to check out that Batman VR that they had that looked pretty good, but yeah, there really wasn't. I did too. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot that I was just like, "Yeah, I I want to throw down X amount of money so I can have this thing because all even." Well, even listening to some of the the bigger channels out there, like Metal Jesus stuff, he will play his occasionally, mm -hmm. but he says it kind of more over sits there, just like Same. you said, Brandon. It just kind of sat there. Yeah, yeah, and that's what happens. You get your fix of it, um, and nothing yep. new is coming out that you know really excites you. I will say this: there are some games that are must plays on there. There's one that not a lot of people talk about called Moss. Mm -hmm. And you're playing as this mouse, essentially. Um, it's like, it's, I think it's based off a book series or something, but it's really good. And they're working on a sequel for PSVR 2. So check check that one out. It's a little hard to explain. Right. There, There's also Half-Life Alex, which is, in my opinion is the best VR game that has come out, period. Um, that shows off everything VR can do. And it's available on every every VR platform right now, even the Steam one. It's also um, a Half-Life game. 
yeah, it's a Half-Life game, so you, you, you know what you're getting, but it, it's 100% the best VR game that's released to this day. So I want to uh, mention, I, I do want to mention a game, agrees, uh, I want to mention a game that I played that I haven't seen any other genre do yet, the, the style of game it was. Uh, maybe Moss is kind of similar, I guess, uh, but it's called Theseus. I, it was a free download I got on PSVR. Yes. And you basically your your visual point is like a camera in the corner of the room, so it's almost like a Resident Evil style game, uh, but it's all medieval stuff. But you you see the character walk into frame, and then you're automatically in the corner of a, the room, and you see the room in full 3D, and you move the character around the room and into the next room, and then you're back into a, a different section, and you can see a different room. the The way that game actually right. played was just really cool for me in VR because it wasn't like. I'm not the character. I'm not playing around, but I'm manipulating the character in this 3D world, which was really cool. That I could walk the character right up to the camera and just look at him, and then walk away and see him. You know, actually walk away in that 3D style. That sounds yeah, really mean, interesting. I, mm -hmm. Look it up. Look, it, it, check there, out some videos of it. Of it's a really, really fun game to play. I. That one I haven't played, but I've seen gameplay of. But I'll, I will say this: uh, if Limited Run Games is able to put out over 50 uh, physical VR games for the you know PSVR. I did There's not know that games on there. Yeah, yeah, they have over 50 right now, and they're still making, them, and they're mm. going to continue making uh, PSVR uh, one games even with the release of the VR two. So um, I mean, it's got support. It really does. There's a ton of exclusives for that one. But I think the general consensus is that the uh, the Quest 2 is, you know, more powerful than the uh, PSVR 1. But, um, gotcha. uh, yeah, I, like I said, there's definitely a lot to check out on there for sure. Um, what topic are yeah, you guys interested in moving on to next? We have a giant list of stuff. I know oh, we talked so about. much. Oh, we didn't even <laughs> mention, which I forgot, oh, yeah. the, Ghost, the Ghostbusters oh. VR. That's I was going to cool. say, we're already there, so we're already talking about VR. Yeah. We're jumping to Ghostbusters. Yeah, I, I can't wait for that. that. I can't wait for that. That's gonna be good. That's, See, that's pretty damn cool. <laughs> if anything I, would would get me to buy the VR, it would be that. However, uh, I kind of have to have a PlayStation Five first. Mm. So it's the one big roadblock. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Good luck. I, I'll uh, I can help <laughs> you get linked up with one, Scott. Uh, message me after. I I think I've gotten like. 16 now for, for friends all you know retail so i'll help you out with that if you need help um you definitely you gotta grab ps5 though there's a lot of stuff on the horizon for that the, the vr2 stuff looks really cool among us vr the heck is that <laughs> my son that my son played among us for like a whole month maybe and then just dumped it and just moved right on it's just funny how it's still carrying on somehow I remember the excitement of it coming to Switch. So I bought it for that because it was five bucks mm -hmm. and uh, tried it out. It was fun for a minute, but it's one of those things where it felt like a fad, kind of like um, what's the one that there's another game that people kind of got really into that came to Switch as well. I don't know. It's one of those weird games and you can only play for so long and it's multiplayer only. It's crazy. So, right. Uh, Horizon Call of the Mountain. Forgot about that one. I think that one's been announced for a minute, right? Yeah. Having been the uh, like game, in, is it in between both, or is it right after two? I think it's right after two, if I'm not mistaken. I think it kind of carries on after. Yeah, I, I think so as well. I haven't even beat two, so I can't say too much about it. I, I haven't even played the second one yet. Though. I've been waiting for that price drop because uh, I'm tired of buying stuff new. I, <laughs> I got it on Macari for 25 shipped or something like that, or I wouldn't have got it yet either. Nice. Yeah, it uh, really depends. B before I, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not gonna shell out sixty dollars every time something no. comes out. No, um, absolutely and, and, not. And, and, and when they, when they start raising them up to seventy, uh, it, it, you know, it oh. better be coming with something real, real, real yeah. special. Uh, it better be and, good. And, absolutely. And, um, like but, God of War, it's got to be a God of War <laughs> for me. Something like, like that. A big game that you're waiting on, that you're expecting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, Resident Evil 4 and Village coming to VR. Man, I'm telling you, Resident Evil 4. I have not got my friend downloaded that for mm -hmm. VR. I think he said it's pretty solid. It looks yeah, it so good. Yeah, so I've, I've heard how... so much good stuff about uh, Resident Evil 4 yeah. and Oculus. Like, uh, Shane, that... Shane plays the shit out of that. 
Was that the the original version or the remake that's coming out? That's coming to VR. Because I haven't heard that one yet. So the, the yeah, it's the original okay. game that came out on GameCube, Resident Evil Four for GameCube. They ported it into the VR. See, I I love that game, but I don't want to play it anymore. <laughs> it's just <laughs> oh, I know. Give, don't give me the give me the we, remake. We PS3, PS4, it's getting a PS5 version and the remake. Crazy. Yeah, I wonder how Village would be on there. Um, I still haven't beat Village either. I've two hours into it. It's wild that I haven't. But uh, oh, seems to be uh, a pretty good game. I don't think I've heard anything super negative about it. I really Let's got get on. back into that one. This That's table cool. right here, that is Village right there. Oh, nice. So. Oh uh, that- yeah. That that is in a stack of uh, videos I'll be doing here soon for for a ha- a upcoming Halloween video, and nice. I have played about half the game so far. It is creepy as hell. Oh I yeah, I love it. It, it gets it very is. immersive oh, in I got VR. Two hours in, I'm telling you. Wow, I got to try that for sure. Yeah, we're going to do a whole horror theme stuff for October. I think I think that's going to be the uh, the theme we're going to focus on. It doesn't have to necessarily be directly horror, but hey, throw some Castlevania in there. Let's get some ghosts and goblins. Yes, all. This is, this all is my Hall- flesh and blood. <laughs> this is my Halloween game this year. So uh, nice. if, if you if you watch my channel, get ready to laugh because uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not cool. I'm not I'm not I'm not ruining any spoilers for my whole 141 followers. So <laughs> uh, you're gonna nice. make me like play a horror game this year. Oh, you got to, Mark. Just just I'm, this, I mean, I'm gonna have to play horror games. They're not my forte, but I'll force myself to play them. Some yeah, will be good. I mean, there's a lot there's of, good uh, ones out there for other sure. Other games that are like horror themes, where I mean, like I said, like actually, Happening, I think it's a good not... time to play because there's a what game was it that came out? I thought it came out in 2017. I think we talked about it last time. Um, or I think it was uh, me and Tony about the uh, the game where you got this uh, this girl. She's like got a men- mental problems essentially. Oh no, that was the one Shane was talking about. I can't oh, remember the name of it. I, I know, I know. It's yeah. called, it's yeah, called yeah. Uh, Am- I, it's called Amber Heard versus Johnny Depp. I've played that. <laughs> oh yes, yes. <laughs> that's that is it. A very... I almost thought I had it. Uh, I think it's that. right it there, the right there on the tip of the tongue. I swore it came out the same year that Breath of the Wild did, but maybe I'm getting the, the year uh, mixed up. I, Mark, I know what you're talking about. But there are that's so not... many. Oh games. wait a minute, I'm sorry. You're talking I'm about Hellblade. That's the one you're talking about. Hellblade. Yeah, the Serana Hellblade. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. S- send you a sacrifice. Server. Yeah, I I could see the game, but it's like I heard of it like five. I haven't really talked about the game at all in like years, so I was like, uh, I almost is there said Hellblade Cap- Naraka Point or something like that too. The 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 is new it, there's a new Hellblade that, that it's coming out, I believe. I don't think it's out yet, but it's I think it's going to be I like an Xbox I, exclusive on it. I thought I had that on my system. I could maybe it's the first one. I thought it was Naraka Point or whatever. Might be the first one, but like, I've never played the game. Be. Used to play it. Coming yeah, October. yeah, have, yeah. Right that's time. what I'm going to try to do for uh, October is dive into some horror because I, I enjoy it a lot, but I don't give it enough love. That's for sure. I would. De- I'll I definitely play, play that. That's Hillblade I'll again. Like, I like hold them until October to play. So stupid. <laughs> that's what I like to do. Well, it's uh, like Bloodborne. I, I my hmm. son and I, we tried playing Bloodborne when it first came out. And we yeah. got frustrated. We were like, oh, F this game. And we and that was it. And so now bad. it's kind of like, it's like, all right. Uh, it's been sitting there for I don't know how long. Now I got to pick it back up and play it because I know it's a fantastic game. I've seen people playing it. I just never, I just never delved into it enough because we got so frustrated at the beginning. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just think another right. game that would, that would fit the, the aesthetic. If I can actually get a capture card for my GameCube, is the Lost Kingdom games at least the first one? Mm, it's got yeah. a like a, a, a an era of horror to it, especially since it's the same studio that does Florida. the uh, that does Bloodborne and shit made the same game. Like 20 that's years what prior. I'm wanting to do too. I really want to get. It just popped in my head. I'm like that's if I can get a get away to just to, to stream it. That's it fits. It has that right right. And for it. they're from software game, which is what. Yeah. <laughs> well, the most <laughs> all they do is like game. horror essentially. The most horrific game you could possibly play is Jenga for the Wii because it's so broken, it'll make you want to hang yourself. Bro, so, I'm telling I mean, you, I got just... something worse than that right here. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> that game is bad. So, Jenga! Let's check this guy out. Ride to... trying to end friendships. Please tell me. Ride to Hell Retribution. Got... Oh, the... yeah, this is an obviously bad game. Bad. I, I've heard of that, yeah. Yeah, it's a wild one. 
Dude, that game is so <laughs> bad. It's like unplayable. Unplayable. Um, that, while we were talking about some of the horror, um, they did show that Village is getting a third person mode as well as a new DLC that will be played after the main story and it focuses on like the uh, Winters family. And See, all now, that. third person um, mode may get me into that a little more because if I'm playing yeah, in VR, really... I can get first person. I understand it, but like if I'm playing like on a flat screen give me the option to look at my character or not right no it makes sense That's seven it. when they made seven and went first person it was super controversial for the series <laughs> um mm-hmm. and i'd you know i still prefer my third person resident evil um but seven is in my top three resident evil games so it's a they definitely brought it back to where it needed game. to be there yeah it brought all the work back and not all the goofiness of five and six those games were I can't even play five and six. They're so bad for me. Just as goofy they're as just, movies. <laughs> they're so yeah. They're just especially it's cheesy. Six. It's very oh, cheesy. Some of those lines were hard to get through. Five turned oh, me off so sorry. turned me and my wife off so bad that we we bought it used. We took it back and then we never even touched <laughs> six. <laughs> yeah, six is worse than five in my opinion. Uh, four is what started all that. Four did like a whole different thing. With yeah, big Red time. Evil, where it's more action, less horror. But it's also touted as the best Resident Evil game, one of the best games of all time. So it's like a, you know, it did something good, but it also did something for the series that wasn't what people liked. So, so Sean, I, I, Sean I mean, in the I, chat, Sean in the chat says he thinks the village will look weird in third person. What do you guys think about that? That it'll look weird. What? Like playing the game in third person. Oh, in third person. Yeah. Uh, well, considering that they made it as a first-person game, and yeah. it, it it was the first the first first-person Resident Evil game, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, so no, seven started that. What was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Seven, seven. did start. Oh yeah, that. Biohazard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, I I don't know. If it was built where you could switch it on the fly, it it may seem mm-hmm. more natural to us. But now since you've already played through it. Or mm-hmm. if you have played it, and then it, 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 it'll seem really foreign. But if it, I don't know, it might be worth worth having a look in third person, though, because I'm used to, I'm still used to playing third person Resident Evil. Right. So uh, yeah. I actually yeah, kind of too. prefer it that way. Um, but I'll take it I either did. way. Oh, hey, Sean, uh, Sean said uh, Resident Evil Survivor was actually the first uh, first person game. Completely, you didn't get your you audio on that. Yeah, you cut out. Yeah, your audio oh, no. cutting out really bad, Tony. Can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, it just keeps doing it at random times. So oh, he's uh, doing yeah, a uh, it's Chevy Chase impression. That's what it is. <laughs> uh, Survivor, yeah, that was the first one yeah. that did first person. It was not a good game. Uh, Resident Evil Dead <laughs> Aim was a third and first person hybrid. Which was also a terrible game, and I think that's why they <laughs> ditched the first person with that, but... A first person is like the go-to for games now, so it's just like kind of expected. But the it's template like the for designing a game in 2022 is it as first person being standard. So if they want to do something different. They're like, okay, we're not doing first person this time. Let's do third. They're branching off. Like, what what can we do? So it's it's a weird thing where uh, I think Call of Duty and games like that really made that the primary for people. Um, that's unfortunate. Now it is. I my, think that's another reason I don't play Call of Duty. Person. Yeah, damn, I no, that did so much to the game industry. I think there are games out there that you know they, that there's a reason why that they designed them either in first or or, or third person. Uh, like just for example, I don't think I would want to play Sniper Elite in first person. It just it wouldn't it wouldn't work you out. Can, though. Yeah, but I just I don't want to. Some games I mean, just don't play I well mean, first. I mean, you go into first person, of course, when you know when you're aiming down your sight and everything. That's a little different. Yeah. But that's that's because you know you are taking that point of view. You are taking the point of view of actually seeing through the eyes of that person, so you can get trained on that per on that on that person you're going to take out. Um, yeah. So, but I would PUBG play the PUBG does game that now. very well. What game? Yeah. PUBG. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Battle- yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think I just always uh, go to whatever the game was designed with. And if it has, like, another mode, I usually don't mess with it. If it was designed first person, I'll play first person, whatever. Designed third, let's let's go with third. Just how I go. Just gamer. It's my rules. Yeah, just, just play the game. What, I just want to play how they made it. Um, in the game. Yeah, it is. Um, so staying along the kind of horror theme, I guess. Um the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners Chapter Two. You guys know anything about that? I'm out of the loop. Absolutely, I'm, nothing. I'm not nothing. even played the first yeah. one yet. I need to. I've heard the first mm-hmm. one was actually a really, really good like VR experience game, and I need to get into it. But I have not played it yet. Right. Yeah, I haven't either. I don't know. I actually don't know anything about the game. I'm not looked into that one. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. So, I fell out of a. Uh, Walking Dead, probably like mm-hmm. season four and anything it had to do with that, it rubbed me in such a way that I just I don't care about anything. I've only really watched the, the property of the show. It just went downhill for me. Uh, I got to that chapter four and, or uh, season four and I'm like man, this is just getting old and boring. It's just a, a walking show. They're just walking. <laughs> Troll uh, walking. Well, it's, it got it's it's essentially like, what it is. It's like Kevin Smith said about Lord of the Rings, you know, hey, we're walking, we're walking there, we're walking there. Oh, and then yeah. he drops and the ring in. Oh. The Hobbit was. <laughs> Time to go back. Pretty much. No, the only Walking Dead game that I've actually played is it's Walking Dead Survival Instincts on the 360. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. It, it got trashed a lot by, by critics, and I can see why they did, but I, I think I got it for... Uh, I think it was like two dollars and a cup of soup, and um, yes. so yeah. I and I, I started playing it. It's it's really not that horrible of a game. It's just you got to take it in small doses because there there are the broken aspects of it where you're just kind of like, oh god, I I got to step away. Right. So I mean, yeah. if you have if you have two dollars and a cup of soup and you see someone alongside the road that is selling that game, by all means, pick it up. Yeah, it's it's not that it's well. not it bad. Was, I've actually I heard good things game. about it, but like you said, it, it it was like a media bomb on it. But like, if you actually talk to people that played it and enjoy the series, then it is actually a decent little game. It had good elements. Yeah. It had good elements to a game. I I don't think it was full, fully flushed out like it should have been. Right. The, right. If if it would have gotten an extra coat of polish on it, you know, instead of it being like a five or a six, it could have been a seven or an eight. Mm-hmm. Um, some people think it's you know much more of a toilet game than a five or a six then uh, i i'm i'm at about a five or a six for myself on that one i've never played into the telltale series it's just not my not my thing i know they had that That's walking dead tale one. yeah yeah I, i'm just not into terrible that. i just never finished it i'm not a fan of uh those style of games but that no. is one of the few that did keep me going through where i literally just watched the story i didn't i didn't play i mean the game that's what, it's so, just right. a story driven game with like some that's all it is yeah the right. only one that, decision that's not going to matter in the end the only one that really interested me was the uh back to the future one and mm-hmm. i i never played I all the like way through it at all it's uh, just it, so cartoony yeah. the cartoon style so, is what turned so, me off yeah, if you're going to, if any of them, I would say, like, if you're going to go for just a story, like, I mean, you just watch it on YouTube, essentially. The Batman one was Batman. the best one. That's Batman was good. Told. Really, really good, actually. Um, Walking Dead was okay. Um, it wasn't bad. But, like I said, I can't play this game. I can't sit there and be like, yeah, make a decision at least. No, like, no, any, dude, those Telltale games insane. like that, I, I don't get into those. I never got into, uh, like, the Until Dawn series. Um, Uncharted, like Tales I just I don't like those That's kind of why I games. Get to that. Re- uh, I knew Mark. You, you didn't you didn't like the Un- Uncharted games, Tony? Mm-mm, I did not. No man, really? I, I, something about the cutscene like stuff. I'll just sit there and fall asleep, and then it's like gotcha. oh, all of a sudden okay. I'm like I'm dozing off, and then it's like oh, quick action, push the X button multiple times. I'm like oh, the fuck. Okay, yeah, keep so, you awake. I love Uncharted. So, it's just boring. Well, you see, I I never played four yet, and I played the one after. I can't even remember the name of it. Um, oh, but so I got it right here. Yeah, what is the name of it? The Lost Legacy. Yeah, Lost this. Legacy. So right. yeah. That that being said, Tony, are uh, would you 
did you steer away from Metal Gear Solid Four then? Because they had like eight hours of cutscene. So I haven't or, played. Yeah, I haven't played Metal Gear Solid since like the first probably two Metal Gear Solids. I'm talking like original Nintendo Metal Gear Solid. Whoa! I just whoa. I just, not my You're cup wild. of tea. Your thing. <laughs> not my oh, cup you. of tea. <laughs> See, I, I'm not. In, I'm not into. I, I'm not into anything RPG, um, mm-hmm. you know, turn-based RPG. Oh, see, that, uh, I, mean, I love uh, a lot of that. See, that's that's a lot of the shit that I really like. If if it's action I RPG, mm-hmm. views. <laughs> yeah, if it's action RPG, I can get into that. But right. I'm not into anything yeah. Japanese RPG. Mm-hmm. But even Ooh, though Metal Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear is not that. It does have that very Japanese element to it because, of course, right. you know, look who made it. And I don't know yeah. what it is, but when I played the, the first Metal Gear for uh, PS1, it, it just captivated me. And I think that was one of the very first games I ever finished. Hmm. And then um, and then when I played Metal Gear Solid 2, I was like, give me more, give me more. But I will admit, I never have played all the way through 3, and I've heard that 3, Snake Eater, is the best one. So, I've heard that. Um, you I, do see it on a lot yeah, of lists. I've heard that. I do watch a lot of the lists and stuff, but you, you do. do see it up there. So Definitely. I think um, I actually I remember I think three was out at this point. So I'm like, hey, I haven't played any of the games yet. So I'm like, hey, let's let's go back and actually start from the beginning. I actually started with the MSX version uh, for mm-hmm. Metal Gear and played that. Um, then went and played the NES version of Metal Gear. Jumped on the solid on the PS1. Yeah, dude, man. I, people don't even talk about the the pre PS one Metal Gears ever, but uh, they're fun. This is a top down one. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The MSX one was like the first release, and then it went to NES. And so I think on. the only um, Metal Gear that I played was what's it? The HD collection for the Vita. Yeah, yeah, I got that as the well. The version of it I played. Um, Why not like the ideal my, version? My favorite, my favorite game for the series uh, is Twin Snakes, and which is the remake of one for GameCube. Right. And of course, else. that was just a. I don't know if they officially announced it yet, but there was it was rumored that there is a remake hey. of the remake coming out very soon. Well, that game is just <laughs> it did a fucking right inception. Um, oh yeah, that's what I would. I know it sounds weird. It does when they say that remake of a remake, but I think it did everything right mm-hmm. that was wrong with Metal Gear when it came out. Not that it was ever a bad game. I played it and I enjoyed it. It's a it's hard to go back to. I mean, it's not a super easy to game. To it go is. Back to. It you is. Into, the, you jump into the the GameCube version, way easier to control. It just feels like a more uh, fleshed out and solid game to me. Well, that's like Goldeneye. I, I I just Goldeneye. I I had to capture footage for that. This video. <laughs> it's it's a good game. Oh, oh Brand, I didn't want to say we did, we did a viewer from the Twitch. Controls though on the, uh, on the it was like man. LB yeah. bad. I can't pronounce his name, but they said they only ever played the one on NES. Oh, yeah. yeah, see, it's see? a good one. Sorry. Can't, I like can't it. produce, can't, can't produce this person's name at all. But I saw you. I'm glad somebody brought up pre, you know, solid games. That's cool. Yeah. Yep. Nobody. And then we got a, uh, we've got Sean on the uh, on Facebook Live over here. He said that uh, he hasn't finished five yet. He's worried the end, ending's going to be sucky, uh, but it looks pretty unfinished. We got uh, Ryan over here saying. He said, I have only played Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid 2, and Metal Gear Solid 3. He prefers Metal Gear Solid 3. Yeah. So, so apparently he just wants to be called Bo. It's one of Tony's guys. Oh, hey. Yeah. What's up, Chris? He's watching from Twitch. Bad Bohica. Nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah. um, nice. I, I, I will say while we're going along, it's kind of related, sort of. Um, we got a mix of our topics here, so I apologize. Just trying to get nah. through. There's a couple of them I really want to save until the very end. Topics, Some heavies topics. here, like three, uh, three heavies that we got going on for me. That's right. So I'll get hang into the uh, end. Stay around yeah, to the uh, end of the podcast so we can hear about the good topics. Yes. Yeah, yeah I say we got end. three big, course, big topics to talk about. Thing. Um. Well, I guess four. Uh, one which I go ahead and say, just kind of going over the Tokyo Game Show 2022. Uh, t- tons of announcements, but let's go jump to um, it's the 10th anniversary of Borderlands 2, and they just put out today. You can get Here's a really cool new gun if you um, are still playing. They said they have 1.5 wow. million active users still on Borderlands Jesus. 2. 
I mean, yeah. to be fair, it's been 10 years since they put out a good Borderlands game, so. Well, I, <laughs> yes, but it's still it's wild. The best, that it's the best game, Borderlands. But the, the gun they released, and they, they posted on their Facebook, it's the, uh, it's the, should be the Penetrating Unkempt Herald, but it's only usable if you're, like, OP, it's, like, level 80, OP 10. Fair, the game's been out so for So it's the years, high, so it, well, no, I think part of that, but that's, like, the highest, like, the, once you hit level 80, you start going through the OP levels, OP 10's the highest, so they're giving you the free gun, but it's the best version of that gun, essentially. You just have to play it, like, 20 times to get to that level hey. to mm. use it, but it's, a, mean, it's one of, it's one of the best guns in the game. If there's 1.5 million active users for a 10-year-old oh, game that they're originally gonna get launched it. on the PS3, I keep going back to the then, too. and I mean that's that makes sense. Um, give them a weapon they got to really work for, but hey, it's free. You don't have to pay for this gun. Yeah, it's um, the, I, think I think it's, it's, I think it's really it's, cool. It's, it's arguably one of the best ones. It's time for an update yeah. for that game then. Yeah, yeah, need update. It's good the way it is. Don't 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 ruin the game. If don't you're going to play piece. Borderlands that 2, is, you you got to yeah, play it. The Vita. This is easily the best version of the game. I if, have I could, it. if I could FPS, come through the screen and smack the shit out of you, I would. Four, 4K, <laughs> 120 frames per second. Why don't you use that code on your Vita version? I the best <laughs> I'm going to. Watch it won't me. work, is, damn it! It won't work! That's the only version I got. <laughs> that's the only <laughs> one I got on Borderlands 2 right now. I don't have the uh, handsome collection or anything, so. I don't think. Well, did, yeah, uh, got, didn't Handsome Collection come out on? Didn't it, the Handsome Collection come out free for PlayStation like what last year? I think the Handsome Collection came out like five years ago. But I think I think they released it like know, on free on PlayStation draft. Plus a little while, like like a year year it's and a half possible. ago. Really? I'm pretty sure I, I got, got it in my. I've, I've got something in my. Um, I've got something in my damn. Uh, in my library, I believe it is the Handsome Collection. Yeah, because if I missed it, then that sucks. But it's a cheap. The handsome collection is dirt cheap to get, so it's not mm -hmm. a big yeah. deal. Um, the game's a I'd, I'd, I'd want that physical anyway, but yeah, if that did I come have, out uh, free, I don't know how I missed that. I do have three, but I've never touched it, so I mean, and I've never so, really looked at any reviews or anything, so uh, why, why is why is everybody gravitating to two, not three? What's wrong with three? Because I'm, I'm uh, smelling, well, I'm I'm smelling hard something hard. wrong with you're, three. You're, you're, <laughs> you're, the, the community kind of tears itself apart. Borderlands 3 has better <laughs> gameplay. The okay. graphics gameplay, the, the, the UI is better. The problem between 2 and 3 with most of the fan base, or at least a good portion of it, is the story, the direction they took the story. A lot of people didn't like the main villains. Oh, they didn't like a lot of the writing. So it's our, it's pretty much considered the best story is in 2. Best gameplay is yeah. in 3, but a lot of people didn't like the story. And that, that gets yeah. into, some people didn't like the, the direction, didn't like the villains. Some of it gets into the political aspect of it, some of the background stuff. I think the bulk of it's just the story. The, the writing just wasn't there. The villains just weren't as good as Handsome Jack, the Eclipse of Twins. Because it's a, you're going from like this egomaniac essentially to two Twitch streamers essentially. So <laughs> yeah. So I'll, me and Mark are uh, streaming, playing through Borderlands Three. Actually, we did our first session. It's not, last it's not a bad game it's if you're just playing fun. through it. It's fun. I had a blast. A good chunk of the story is not bad, but the ending's lackluster. It's just the overall quality of the writing. I and this is part of my personal opinion. Just wasn't on par for two, at least as far okay. as the main quest, the main villains. But like so, it, like any game, it's everyone's gonna have a different opinion on it. Yeah, See, I uh, I've only beat one and two. Uh, played the first Tales of the Borderlands. I had a lot of fun last night playing that. Um, story was like very minimal for what we played. How well, far? How I far is the game, Mark? I played for I about two there. hours. We, we, we yeah. were about to get to the point. We started just skipping a lot of the side quests because, nah, screw it. But we, we were about to get to the <laughs> point where we were about to get on board of the Sanctuary 3, and then Sanctuary 3 becomes a thing, and then you start going to other planets. But I was well, going to was researching. It. When I was researching this, there's like something like 200 hours worth of DLC for Borderlands 3 that I've never played. That's something subjective. crazy. Like it that. depends on how long it actually takes you to play when you are uh, paying yeah. attention to the story. But I, I will caveat... A, most of the like a good at least two of the dlcs were were really highly rated hmm. like most i think there's only like yeah. one of the four main main four dlcs people didn't like but a lot of people said the dlcs actually had a lot of a lot better writing i agree with that they, they yeah the that's what i've heard too oh, i've heard and, that the dlc is better than the main and game I will, other story. than the main characters there's a, another character named ava in borderlands 3 and a lot of people she's another reason a lot of people didn't write it right uh, i can't speak didn't like it because 
they released like a delete a deleted scene that would have been better in the main game in one of the director's cut versions, I think. But her character just wasn't. You could argue was mishandled. Just she just wasn't written well. She just comes off as a annoying character essentially, and she's supposed to be coming into. She's one of the main characters, and she's kind of set up to be a big role in the next main Borderlands game. But she was oh, kind of yeah. mishandled as a character. She just a lot of people just don't like her. Cut her loose. I, yeah, let's, very, very let's have, much want to jump on the tiny Tina. There's there's a let's lot of there's one. a lot more videos on YouTube if you want to get like more in depth on why people do and don't like the game. Okay, but, I'll have a look because I, I never made I never made it through the first Borderlands either, and I think it's because I I have the worst luck. I'm the worst luck gamer <laughs> because everybody who was playing at the time, I'm like, what the hell's the matter with this game? And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like. Well, I went, I went off to this one direction, and I keep finding these dog things, and, I, and that's what I told them. I kept calling them dog things. And oh, like, skags. These, yeah, the skags. And I'm like, keep finding these dog things. They're like, they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, I have not found a person to kill. I have not found anybody. I feel like I'm Mel Gibson in uh, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. I'm just shit. out in the middle of BFB. I couldn't find shit. They're like, go the other direction. I was like, okay. So here I am, twenty hours into this game, and all I'm doing is killing skags. And then, so you're, not, um, you're not progressing with the story, is what it sounds no, like. No, I wasn't. I was just, what the hell's going on? And just then, follow so the, next, the quest markers, essentially. Yeah, it's like every game. It's a loot well, shooter. You're gonna grind yeah. out for for the best guns. So when I did buy the HD version, though, I was I started checking it out, and I was like, okay, you know, uh, I went the right way now, and I was actually following around. I told yeah. you, I have the worst. The worst luck in gaming. So uh, if if you want to see, some... hey, me too. Yeah. <laughs> you're talking yeah, to the guy. I... You're talking to the guy who's uh, 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 360 red ringed in the middle of Halo Three, and when they sent oh, it gosh. back to me, I, I had actually been killed in a spot that I kept respawning where I would just continue to die. Yeah, this so... is the best. Yeah, so I give them a call, and I'm like, hey, and I'm talking to somebody, and they're like, oh, we're really sorry. Send it back to us, and I'm like, what the hell? Again, I remember you telling that. Oh, yeah, I told you guys about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah that's wild. That's wild. Mine is uh, always, I I always I typically some, find like, the glitches. Might... Yeah. Yeah. I find the good glitches. Used to, uh, ones. Man, back, back in the day, we used to do, um, especially with, like, early 3D games, we'd do, like, glitch hunting, where you would, mm -hmm. like, purposely try to find these crazy glitches and before they started patching stuff now yeah before patches were a thing like we did at metroid prime hunters um we excessively did it there was like a whole i don't know what you call it i guess for that time it would have been something like a clan just a group of people uh for metal here uh metal of honor heroes 2 and psp did that a lot had a lot of those kind of glitches that was fun stuff man i guess it's kind of a fun really to find those glitches there's a really good glitch i guess in the ps4 version which is was never released here in the states of um far cry 3 where you can actually go into some of the buildings that are off the map and you can actually go yeah, goofing around that. and walking mm, around and, yeah nice yeah. far cry 3 is the best in the series i would die with that i love that game have all the far cry games on steam that still haven't played any of them far cry i bought all, all of them on a steam games sale. of all time just sitting there I, I recommend that to everybody if you're going to ever jump in that series just start with three one and well, two are good. They're they're very they're different though. A little uh, yeah, a little yeah. off topic since we're talking about Far Cry. Have you guys ever heard the uh, the little thing that you can do to solve the game in Far Cry Four? And like at the very very beginning. Yes. Oh, you just sit there forever just for like twenty minutes. The dude comes back and that just yeah. ends the game. I, that's it's a like, really neat thing they put in the game. That works in Far Cry that? Five also. Yes, does it? it does. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, actually, I think I six too. I played through six this year. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's in that. I think I saw a video of that. I think they're just going to run with that. And why not? I think for Far Cry, yeah, just I make mean, that hey. your thing. Like, hey, you can speed run this game in like 20 minutes. Wow. See, they I, should I do hate something to give really a definitive answer, but they should okay. do something really funny where, like, if you do do that, instead of just you know the game ends and you're like, oh, congratulations, like you actually get up with a villain and you go to like a salad bar someplace, a buffet or something. <laughs> And then, just then you just hang out, out start yeah. hanging out with them. Yeah, you're just hanging out, you know, sm you know, smoking and stuff, and you know, having a couple of drinks. You're you're actually at like a strip club or something. That's the end of the game. You just, just end of the strip club. Sharing a beer with them, just like, hey man, let's let's do it. Let's end it. 
Nice. Yeah, that that would be that's cool when they uh, I, I want a game things like purposely just, to a series. We need more like triple A games that you're just like you're just the villain. I, I agree. Yeah, that's that's triple A. I agree. Games all together. I'm I'm always or the good the guy. Villains win. Give me a bad guy story, game. You do everything right and you just lose. You can't win the game. The game's <laughs> At the you end, you just I die. Want the to win. <laughs> the unwinnable cool. game. We challenge you. Kind of like the games when they used to come out with uh, the MLB games, and they were like, okay, the first person to have a, a perfect game wins a million dollars or oh yes. or whatever it was. Yeah. So you know, this is the unwinnable game. If you find a win to a way to win the game, we'll give you a million dollars. <laughs> Sean, Have you guys ever heard of the really cool thing they did? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Tim. Uh, I'm sorry. Sean in the chat, he actually mentioned that uh, the Matrix Path of Neo, you can actually end the game in the beginning by choosing the blue pill. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Never choose that's, the blue uh, That's neat. I like that. Well, uh, thank you for this. Brian, I'm going to write what? that down. <laughs> right? <laughs> what Scott said, it doesn't really ever have to do with anything. But you guys, uh, have you ever seen those contests they did for, um, I believe it's the adventure games on Atari 2600? Have you ever heard that story? Are you talking about the game so Adventure? Had... Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I might be saying the wrong title. There Maybe. Were, there were uh, three. Really or, sure. There were four oh, titles. Sword, Sword Quest. Sword Quest. Yes, Sword Quest. Earth, okay. Fire, and Have you heard of the prizes? Something. Like? Earth, fire, yeah. water, and then eventually they did re One they did. did just recently release Air World, which mm. was yeah. It, it, it was a um, it hadn't been produced, just... and that's when they folded over. But now you can actually play it. Nice, right? Uh, the prizes for that were insane. You get I, yeah. I remember one of them was like a, um, a chalice. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A gold and then chalice. a gold, uh, gold crown, I think yeah. maybe for one of the prizes. Hmm. Nice. That was insane. Uh, that had nothing to do with anything we're talking about. I thought I'd mention that. <laughs> it kind of did. Cool. It kind of did. <laughs> hey, yeah. there was a movie. There was a movie recently yeah, that they made about that that had uh, Robert England as uh, like a, a voice in it. What was the name of that movie? The Robert England movie we watched a while back. If I can go Google it faster. A nightmare. Uh, yeah, probably. A nightmare. No, no, no. No, it was a. It was about a. It was about a game um, that people found. It was a retro game, and it had instructions where if you win the game, you win like twenty five thousand dollar grand prize. Choose or die. Choose or die. Okay. And it's uh, it's it's kind of based on that, that th based on that little theme there, but it's actually it was good. My friends didn't like it, but uh, I I thought it was a good movie. I'll, cool. I'll have to check that out. I'm going to pop my note. Yeah, choose, choose or, or die. die. Choose or die. I'll, 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 I'll check that out uh, after the podcast. Um, let's see. So one of the other things that we have here is a topic uh, that we're going to talk about is uh, Yaku, the Yakuza series. Mm. Um, I kind of – they already so. announced last year that they were kind of um, – like rebranding the game so essentially what they're going to do uh there's two series that are part well it's the same series there's two games that are part of the same series that are essentially just yakuza games mm -hmm. uh, i can't remember what the other one is off the top of my head but they're going to rebrand it to just like a dragon to have a turn-based rpg and then have the um the action you know adventurous games and continue on with both and they announced three games for 2023, which is mm -hmm. what? Yeah, three games for one year for the same series. That's that's crazy. Uh, it seems it really seems like a lot of copy and paste. Uh, well, hopefully not, but we'll see. But it is cool that they are, you know, kind of catering to different audiences here. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's that's kind of a, you know that's kind of a good thing because of course I RPG wise, no, no, thank you. That's not my right. RPG. But there. Right, I'm but there are people out there. Other... Well, and like I said, not oh. turn-based RPG. I mean, you, mm -hmm. get, you know, you give me right. a, you know, you give me an action RPG. I'm judgment. Right there with you. Judgment. Judgment are the games that are part of the same. They're the right. same universe. Just so what they're going to do is they're going to one run one run as a um, action adventure series, and then which will be judgment a RPG because yeah, and apparently, uh, like a dragon, sold better than any of the games, and I think they said. It it did better than like zero Kwame and one of the other ones combined. Then that's insane. Yeah. Um, I know really? it did well. 
Yeah, yeah, it's the uh, top selling game of the series. It's been out and, for what, that, two years. Maybe? That's the one that just came out free. It came out free on PS5 or uh, PlayStation yeah. Network, right? I yeah. I started playing it not too long ago, and it, I, yeah. I, I'm having a hard time getting into it. I want to put it like another couple hours into it at least, though. It's, um, man, I just don't think it's just one to start with. Um, it just feels like it's the really most popular because as the game series goes on and it gains more traction, more, mm-hmm. more people will pick it up yeah. and it's advertised more. So it just feels natural like it's going to sell better than a lot of the older games. This is the only one That's that I can crazy that they're Dead Souls. Oh, yeah, and that one's, of course, completely different than games yep. in right. the series. I, uh, I, totally I, different style of game. I couldn't get into the other ones. They're just not for me. I can see their allure, though. I can see why people would want to play them. It's just... It, I think I was expecting more of a, J- a Japanese version of, like, GTA, because, you know, it, it is the Yakuza, but it's it, it just didn't yeah, come across it, that way for me. A Japanese GTA, that's funny. But the the <laughs> thing is with the series similar, very that similar. there are so many games. There, there, um, and the, a lot of them do different style of games essentially there's uh mm-hmm. something like eight or nine main games and then they have other games that branch off and i think they said there's like total there's like 16 games in the series yeah, there's like um, and then of course we all know that all that yakuza is is essentially an extension of shinbu they're building right. off of that and this you know the first yakuza was their their answer to shinbu 3 so it's a it's hit or miss uh i always tell everybody to start with zero um or Kiwami, one of those are good starting points. Like a Dragon is fun, but it can be grueling at times with the uh, the turn-based RPG because it feels like it, it feels like it was their first turn-based RPG they were making for the series. They didn't know what they were doing. It's got it's wacky humor. What? You can't you can't take it seriously. <laughs> um, that is one thing I've, I've definitely like learned playing that the newest one is you cannot take it seriously because like. The voices and shit they've got coming out of these characters' mouths are just insane. Losing your idea. <laughs> You're cutting out really, really bad, well, Tony. Are, are there any characters from Shenmue in in the the, the original? No, Not to I my knowledge. I don't believe so. I don't believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it separate. Okay. You but see, you were talking I, about. It. Was well, it? I I think it'd be it'd be fun if they combined uh, Katamari with Yakuza. <laughs> so. What? <laughs> You know, you're just, you're just throwing shit down. You're rolling a big ball down the street, catching all the cars. That and would be funny. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's just the... Uh... No, but I was going to say what Tony was saying. Like, it's You said it had some weird... Like, Jap- if you get play like a true Japanese game that's got actual Japanese humor, in it, it's so... I don't know if it's dry is the right word, but it's really... It's a weird sense of humor compared mm-hmm. to what you're used to in the West. Like, they're, okay. it's a completely different. I so agree. It, it might come off as kind of goofy at a time, but... Just make that comment, I guess. Well, um, I have that game have was very... actually developed here. It wasn't developed in Japan. They they developed it here in the U.S. Yeah, but who had the oversight? Of... Did was it still? Right, who was it? I'm sure writing. that it was. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. But I can't remember what his name is. Uh, he also worked at Shinmu stuff. I'm sure that he had oversight for everything. But I was just looking on here, and when they say that they were rebranding the games, they were not joking around. They mm-hmm. they literally rebranded the games to where. Yep. So much to the point where they have Like a Dragon 8 marked yep. as an upcoming game. Yep. Like, uh, a Dragon 8. like a Dragon Gaiden. And Like a Like a Dragon Ishin. It's, like, try, it's, like, it's, try, it's like the Like a Dragon is like a soft reset of the series. So they can kind of yeah. catch new people that way. But the people that have been playing the old games, they can continue with that style. It's like they want to go after like two different like styles of games. So two, two different markets that aren't nece- necessarily yeah. against each other. That's Except for the right. I agree with that. I, yeah, I, I didn't know that 2018, a mainline game for the series, came out on mobile and mobile only, which is yeah, wild. That, I had that, no idea. Was it even released here, or is that like one of those weird Japanese? It wasn't games? even released here. Yeah, it was Japanese only. They get so uh, much and then there's shit. one other one I didn't know about. Uh, Kiruro came out first on the PSP, and then a second one came out for the PS3 and PSP. Hmm. Which is You're apparently a to a game kind of nobody series. played. That's funny. Yeah, I've never, I actually never even heard of those on, but it's directly in line with the series. But yeah, there's a lot of games PSP. there. I just like any series, you, it's hit or miss for people. You got to play the game. Uh, I just say don't judge based on one game in the series, and, and you know I stand on that for every play series. All like, sixteen games, and then decide I hate this series with a passion. 
I mean, it really, you're not wrong. It, don't do that. You probably want to torture yourself if you don't like three of them. But uh, I mean, you, I can't, you can't you can't say hey. Um, you can't say you played Zelda two, and then you're like, oh, I hate the series. But here's Breath of the Wild. Never play you know, that game. That's right. that different. The first two Zelda games are like nothing from the rest of the series. They're so not alike the rest of the games. I will actually disagree with you to that. I think. I the, the first, first Zelda one, game the is the most really similar carries to Breath over, of the yeah. Wild. Yeah, but the second Zelda game is like a weird, like top yeah, down yeah, RPG that game random is monster. Like it's, any it's other not, game in the series. Both of those games are we like two separate from everything game. else. Yeah, that's the only I couldn't Zelda beat the first two because they're ter- they're hard as shit to beat. I the, beat the Satellaview games for Zelda, and I still I'm not beat you. The second one is just difficult. The first one, it's like I. You need to like a guy to just wandering around. That's I don't have I like twenty about. hours as a kid to find one cave. I got stuff to do. Now. Yeah, see, you the reason right. that you the one is so similar to Breath of the you, he, he he immediately the game tells you know where it right. He didn't go unless into the cave. you know talk to people or read a guide. You don't know what the fuck you're doing in the first game. It's just That's like true. here you go, have fun. Well, when you were playing the that, game, did you did you keep finding all these dogs, and then that's all you found was all these dogs, and you kept finding more? Do- no, wait a minute, that's the wrong game. No, I just well, I just got lost because I but I, I played it on the on the uh, <clears throat> virtual console, so I was like, I'll just hop in. I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Right. That is why like that, that game is the most. That's why that game is the most similar to Breath of the Wild because you're given you zero really direction similar, with that game, uh, and it's got I, almost. I, it it's, it follows the first game almost story wise because it's very little story game story in Breath of the Wild. It's my yeah, only good thing with that game. You have to search out the story, and that's well, why I like that. I like to a degree, to but too much of it you have to like go out of your way to find it. Well, here's like, the thing. Here's a here's the thing with the first Zelda game. That game was released with the intention of you reading the manual. True. Yeah, but this also game also came out like thirty years ago, and most of the people playing it, like ninety percent of the people, were kids. Who at times had all the time in the world to play. You had all, you're playing like maybe five games for like five, six years at a time. So you have all the time in the world, which is fine. But now I don't have the the time to play that game blind. Like you probably could have. I can beat I like that five. game. I think if you've I have already, made. If you've already played. You know two out. hours. That's if you've played it. You know where things at. If you go into this game blind and have no idea what, you, what you're doing, it's going to take you mm-hmm. forever. That was See, that was just based off of memory and guessing. Honestly, when I didn't watch a walkthrough. I beat the game back in the day. I went back to it on – I either did it on the Wii U or Switch Online. I can't remember which one. Uh, it's on Switch Online, isn't it? The, the original Zelda? Yeah. Yeah, it is. yeah, yeah. Because yeah. okay, you, can play, so it, you can play it like the original way, or they've done this weird thing with a lot of like Switch Online games. Uh, the, the remix the, thing. The remix where it's like, here, here's everything, and just play the game with like all the all the all all your gear and all the hearts and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a neat way yeah. to play it if you just want to just like play the story. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Having kids go through NES games today, they can't handle it. I, I don't know how many kids I've seen. I, part of it is like you had all this, or and because you're playing these games with like the internet is barely a thing, or it's not. I don't, it wasn't a thing when the the original NES game came out. So it's part of a got to like draw the map, take your time, and then it's like you t- go to school, talk with your friends, like oh, then you got to go here. And it's like what? So it was, it was like half of like mm-hmm. you got to like do your own map. Half it was like social, going and talking with people. That's that things. word of mouth game. That's how things were with Pokemon. Oh yeah, yeah. you got to go to this truck. That's where the Mew is. You got to use strength and move this move this truck. Or the uh, the Missingo. Uh, yeah. Learning that I first learned about that like on the playground. Yeah, and that's how things were, man. I didn't know how to do it until like a year ago, really. But I, I heard about it. But I was like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. You walk up and down some some river. Gotta make I'm a certain amount island. of steps and yeah. Yeah, that, that word of mouth gaming, man, that is just an era that that is different and will never be around again. Um and you know what? I I deeply miss the the earlier days. Obviously it wasn't like the early, early days, but earlier days for us of people using uh forums. You know what I mean? That's like not really a thing now. Oh, when they became forums a thing, so that's where you would fun. go. Yeah, I mean, that's you where you have forums, but insider. It, they're yeah, a they're different there. now. It, it, they're just not they're, necessarily forums. It's like Reddit or like Facebook groups, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Reddit, exactly. Reddit and Discord don't don't change out the way that forums were for me. And no, but that's, that's that's just like the natural evolution. You can still like every time I pull up a forum for stuff, it's like oh, it's like 2005. I was like, well, this forum's like been dead. For that's like what I'm saying. Um, I 
man, I had so much fun, so much fun just being on a forum. I didn't even have to be playing a game, but I can remember sitting there on Insider, which was the official Nintendo forums, um, uh, Capcom BBS forums. Uh, I was big into that. There, there was a bunch. There were other bigger ones. Like, I don't know if you guys remember. I think it was called Neo Jack or like Neo GAC maybe. Um, then, of course, like the GeoCity pages, if you guys remember those, that had their own forums. So what you're saying um, is we should bring forums back. We're going to we're gonna start I our own would, forum. We're going to make it a thing again. <laughs> all right, we're making a game judge the forum. That's all there is to it. It's going to look like you're on, but like, yeah, Windows yes, 2000 yes. or something. Yeah, it, just, it doesn't <laughs> work. Like that. It, it doesn't work. Go it's out and get your copy of Windows 98. It's, it's made in HTML and HTML only. That's the only way this this web is gonna work. It's gotta be janky. Yeah, I just it wouldn't. Hey, you, work you might today. bring you might bring some nostalgia. People come in for this nostalgia. It just wouldn't work today. The Speaking way of nostalgia, it, how about that Double O Seven coming out? I disagree because Four Chan yeah. is like not changed at all in like the past fifteen years. It's been around and it's still running strong. Yeah. What was the change, Tony? You can make it work. So, uh, speaking of nostalgia, 007 getting re-released on uh, Xbox and newer consoles. I hope it has the exact same controls. So you got to get the 64 controller. It's terrible, and I just want to uh, see like young kids no. rage. Like, how to, so I don't know what I'm doing. My, uh, that's my input on that. We got a 64 controller for Switch Online. I don't think mm. a majority of people know or realize that. They're, I mean, you have to buy what physical it with the controller. Website, you have so to you have to. Controller. No, um, you don't have to. So yeah, she, when you buy it with Xbox, it should I come with an adapter. It, it was torture for me last week trying to capture that. I was like, "What the hell am I doing?" And I'm like, I solved this game twice, and now I'm trying to play it here in 2022. And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." I, I, I would imagine it would be completely different with the way the joysticks are now, because that game you had to use those C buttons on the side to actually walk around with, yeah, and yeah. then your your joystick was just yeah. for aiming only. So now. Your left thumbstick for years have been option. has been trained to like walk, and now you're trying to aim. Uh, it's not gonna work. You're gonna retrain your brain. Oh, it will. You give it enough they, time, you get back. But I just, if we're gonna play, if you're gonna re-release it how it was. I want the controls to be the same because mm -hmm. I want to see these people go into it and never played it before and just struggle with it hard. <laughs> and you got that one dude that's been playing it for thirty years, just wreck everybody. That's what well, I want to see. That's why they just so, go buy a Nintendo sixty four in the game. But you can't play that yeah. online. You have to have split screen <laughs> with that. I want to go online with the old controls and see people struggle to play it until they get get a hold That'd of it. That'd be good though. But the requ the requirement is they have but the requirement is they actually have to have a camera on them while they're playing. So they go Absolutely. Son of a bitch and just <laughs> So uh, one of the big I, problems is there is no matchmaking on Xbox. Xbox has announced that there is right. no There's online no matchmaking for it. That's probably some I, weird deal. To that's a pull. Nintendo uh, deal. That's the deal I with Nintendo. Mm. It's probably going to be a temporary thing. That'll be timed. I, I, yeah. I, I honestly believe that'll be timed. Now, I don't care about it uh, one bit. I, also, I just yeah, want to play the campaign. I won't play it on Xbox I, anyway. didn't, I played that game strictly for multiplayer. I played the campaign, but you you play that game for multiplayer. Yeah. Split screen. Uh yeah, it's well, one of the most infamous like, multiplayer games out there, be, you know. It'd be nice if Especially we all... Now, I was going to say, Brandon, it'd be nice if that game comes out, find out, find it some convention we're all at or whatever. Get to sit down and play, like, stream that with, like, split screen, like, in one room. Yeah, that'd, that'd be... Great memories. Now, that'd be anybody, right. Yeah, a lot of good memories with that. It's the proper way to play that game. Has anybody seen definitively, because I, I said something about this in my video about it, but I have not been able to find anything online. So if you have rare replay, you will get you will get it for you know as a as a patch uh, or a, a download whatever. Yeah, whatever. it would but, it would make sense, but I haven't heard anything about it. I don't I don't well, think they're going to do that. I have no. They they are it. they are, but they are? my question oh, okay. is they are. But hmm. the thing the thing that I don't know that they are doing is I don't know if they're doing it if you own this or only if you bought it digitally. Well, be I have to be some bullshit if it was digital only. Did. Yeah. No, they, I don't know why they would do that. Uh, I don't think they would. I can't answer it for sure, but I, I would not it, imagine it, it would it ever do like that. It feels like it's going to be a general, everyone gets the same had a lot like, of yeah. five patch Yeah, you know what? The weird thing is, is that I picked that up uh, when that launched. Yeah, when no, I tried to play that on there, I it's, it just uh, I feel, uh, didn't feel good. Sure, uh, well, because that you're game. playing games that were designed with a 64 controller with a well, Xbox One controller, so it, it just doesn't yeah. feel great. That was my complaint that, with it. 
Yeah, I think that I will try to jump into that with the 64 online controller. You know, it um, would be nice now that you have like a, a 64 controller for the Switch that they could bring Rare Replay to the Switch and then you could use the 64 controller because then happen. you could play those games as they were intended. I don't know why well, Nintendo and Microsoft have been somewhat playing great and all these games I, were originally on a system. Cut a deal. Give me that on a Switch <laughs> so I can play it with a 64 pay controller. Pay up, damn it. Pay up. Those I games think... be played. I think the reason is that there are a ton. I know that whole rare replay thing. It was, it'd been worked on for a minute. Um, something that they had wanted to do. Microsoft's like, hey, mm-hmm. we got rare now. Let's release all this stuff. Well, little did they know there was licensing issues for a ton of these games. Like, yeah. there were people that were involved with this part of this oh, yeah. game. Uh, Nintendo had rights to this certain character in this game, even mm-hmm. if Microsoft owned them. So I think that there's like there's a lot of like loopholes with that game. So, well, so many of those so many of those companies cool. that made those games back then are completely disbanded now, but they still have rights yeah. to some of that uh, stuff. So even, it's like right. Yep. Yeah. And, yeah. And there's a lot of those a lot of those characters and the games have been picked up by other companies and they're just holding on to them. Exactly. And Shelled they're sitting it. on them. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, hey, I get free money if I hold on to this. Somebody's gonna pay pay me big money for it <laughs> exactly. one day. Exactly. Right. Jet Force Gemini. There's some issues with rights with like I think there's some like a person designed this character but also had like a partial right. I hate split that stuff. With somebody else. Because, yeah, that's mm. and one of my favorite rare games, Jeff Force Gemini, because I played this shit out of. Me too. too. Me too. Yeah, that's one of my favorites too, and it bothers me that like, hey, we're probably never going to get that on the Switch. The only way I can see that happening is if we got like a remaster where rights were we're fixed with things or we just got to remake them. I feel like a lot of these games, it's not that they couldn't do it. It's just forgotten to time and nobody cares right. anymore. That's really, yeah, that's probably more of the care. It's just a forgotten they, series for a lot of these games. We got to remember their businesses. So they're like, are we going to make money spending all this time and these, uh, with these legal issues trying to get, but Hey, yeah, for yeah. Gemini on the switch, are they going to make money for that? Probably not. No. I don't think the crowd's it, there. But, I mean, we're Worst comes to worst, I still have some of these games, and I still have a 64, so yep. I still have yeah. ways to play it. That's, exactly. that's the way to go, man. That's how you got to be. I don't have a CRT, so there's an issue, but I can still play these games. Ooh. Five bucks of Goodwill, bro. We'll get, you, we'll get you hooked up with one. I hate CRTs, man. They're the worst thing ever made. I just need to get a capture card and hook up to my computer. That'll be good. <laughs> speaking kidding, of, speaking of CRTs, like CRTs, Brandon, what happened to the other three you had on that stack behind you there? Oh, well, I'm working on upgrading something for Game Junction. So uh, I got two of them down here. I sold one of the PVMs. Uh, all, it was the same thing as that top one there. Um, this one just has video out, too. They were the same exact model. So I was like, uh, I got a decent price for it, and it's going for something that's needed. Which I was we'll just, talk about I was just wondering if, you, you, if you heard like an earthquake was coming or something, so you decided to take a couple down so you didn't oh, get shelled no. in the head. No, I got, <laughs> bro, I got, I got five CRTs, small ones, five? sitting on the floor right behind me. <laughs> I'll have to show you guys my stack of the uh, themed ones. I have a Cars, uh, Lightning McQueen nice. one. I got Ninja Turtles, Hello Kitty, and Disney Princess series. Of course, <laughs> yeah. sitting he does. right here in my closet. His little princess yeah, TV. I love... yeah, I'm just going to raise hey. my hand. Brandon, I saw your text. What? My you message? Harassed, you, he's harassing me in the messenger. I am harassing <laughs> you. I'm not. I'm really not. You're an asshole, Mark. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> moving, on to, <laughs> moving on to uh, my character something arc. else. Did you guys have, um, I mean, I, I assume that you guys know what the bigger things are to discuss this year. What, um, let's just jump into this here. Uh, we have a few topics on here. I know that um, we should probably mention, because there's not a ton to say, Sonic Frontiers, they, they put out about a supersonic um, like boss fight thing or something mm-hmm. like that that's going on. I saw the, uh, the design. I don't really have too much to say about it. I think it's cool, but it's also expected. What you guys got anything to say about so not, not being really big into a lot of the Sonic stuff lately, I watched a little bit tonight on the Sonic Frontiers, and it looks really good, man. I mean, like some of the some of the boss battles they were they were showing, and that's kind of where they showed the the Sonic come the Super Sonic coming into play was in a lot of the boss battles. Yes. And apparently, you're not going to be able to fight right. some of the bosses until you even unlock the Super Sonic version, and then you'll have to go back. I yeah. guess either go back or progress towards those bosses more, but. 
It looked actually really, really, what? really nice the way they kind of laid the boss levels out because you're kind of running up the boss in certain patterns and I don't know. It just kind of it looked like it might be a decent right. game finally. I I feel like this is their uh, this is their game that they're really putting that time and promotion. They're promoting this game like hardcore. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen promotion for uh, Sonic like this since probably like Collars came out on the Wii. Um, and DS, I know that they really, really pushed that. I remember seeing it on everything. Um, and, and, you know, it's it's good that they're doing that because uh, it's essentially a Breath of the Wild type game. We got open world mm-hmm. Sonic with also closed down levels that you're going into. So those, those closed in levels, it's like a normal Sonic 3D game would be comparable to like the shrines, I guess, for Breath of the Wild. So you're, you're closed in on those. You're solving the puzzle. You're going back out you're in an open world again. Right. So I think that's like the the gist of what they're trying to do, which an open world Sonic, um, I feel like that is something that they have wanted for a long time because if you guys know some of the history about Sonic, they worked on an open world game for the Saturn, open world type of game called mm-hmm. Sonic Extreme. Um, and that's something they wanted to do on that. It's and just always, also on the Saturn. always failed every time. It's like always a failed attempt every, every time, time they try. Every time. Yeah, Sonic Jam has an open world, like, I think it's, like, essentially, like, a gallery or level selection screen, Mm -hmm. but it's, like, 3D design, you can see what they're trying to do for Sonic Extreme within that game, so it's something they obviously wanted to do for a long time, so I'm pretty excited about it, um, I haven't been, you know, excited about a Sonic game really since Mania, and before that, been a long time, um, I love that they, you know, basically went after sonic 3 and cd and main mania and stuff well a lot uh, of the initial that, a lot of the initial environments that they were showing about two or three months ago it wasn't looking very promising mm-hmm. and then it, it was kind of like they were giving us a real slow drip right. it was like okay yeah. we're just kind of, and then it was like well these backgrounds don't look all that great that kind of a thing and then now we're starting to see the, the big picture and it's really starting to look really really good and like you said it brandon is. i I, I haven't seen a Sonic game that I've gotten excited for in a very long time, mm-hmm. uh, except for like Mania. You know, I, I was really yeah. excited about Mania when it came out. Uh, it pissed me off because I bought I bought that, you know that 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 um, that collector's yeah, edition. Yeah, I got that right here. Yeah, and it came with the code. Yeah, it didn't come with the physical, and I was like, ah, shit. Right. I knew that's how it was gonna be. I think I'm and canceling my God of War pre-order dis- just because of that. Yeah, I was very you disappointed. It? Not yet. I'm thinking about right. it. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I got a pre-order on Amazon too, but yeah, wh- I, dude, why, I don't. Why would you ha- have this anyway. the special? Why would you have a special edition and it only comes with the code? So like, that's so dumb. Buy, well, buy it, you know, buy the standard yeah. edition and, and you get the physical copy. Go, go screw yourself. Not Sonic. only that, but it, not only that, but with the new uh, fi- the new Amazon. God of War, the Jun- uh, Juntar edition, I believe, or Mjolnir, Mjolnir yeah. edition. Um, yeah. It comes with a yeah. hammer, all the extra stuff, and it comes with a steel book. It comes with a steel book case for a fucking yeah. game, and it comes and with a game. download code in it. Like, why they would you even give you me the steel book case? Too. Right, exactly. So <laughs> yeah. now I got to spend the money to buy the, the cheap physical copy and the collector's edition. Book. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's like selling a pair of running. That's like selling a pairing a, a pair of really really nice expensive running shoes to somebody who has wooden legs. <laughs> you don't. They don't need them. I mean, they don't need yeah. those New Balance. Well, why not? They're, they're not the first person to do that either. It's been going on for a minute. Obviously, we talked about Sonic here. It had been going on prior to that. Mm-hmm. There are actually games in the PS3 era that did that. Uh, I remember getting... I'm trying to think what the collector's edition for this game was. But they, they put a code inside it. So you got the case. You got like the actual Shit's case ridiculous. for the game. You open it up, and it's the code. So it's been going on for a while. Um, like you, I've contemplated that too, Tony. But I... Did that. I don't know if you guys were following this, but uh, there's a Fire Emblem game for the Famicom that never got brought here to America. They released a collector's edition. I got it in the closet. It also came with just a code because they didn't put out physical of the game. So their reasoning is a little bit different with that, that there is no physical. Um, and I can't imagine them putting a physical of just a Famicom game out being something that's going to sell like crazy, but yeah. who knows? They did that with that. I bought it. I've had it for, I think it came out maybe 2020, two years at this point. 
I don't know. I'm I'm lost on that uh God of War pre-order because my money hasn't been taken from it yet, so it's just sitting there until it ships, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, man, do I want to do this? But I don't know, man. That hammer's really cool. Like, yeah. I don't know. That's how they get you. You're making that mistake of pre-order games. It's a hard one. We'll see if I if I do get that one. Honestly, I, I'm gonna buy that collector's edition to flip it because I I know that they're already sold out. Like you can't buy it anymore right now, and I've got a pre-order for it. So if I get it, I mean. People are already like putting them online on eBay, you know, like guaranteed, guaranteed it. pre-order, you know, and they want like fucking nine hundred dollars for that damn thing, and I'm like, I'm okay. You're, you're guaranteed to at least get your money back if you oh, decide you don't want. Well, you know bullshit! I, mean? I guarantee to get at least out. like at least money plus half, guaranteed. So oh. you could for sure, for sure. Well, I, so, I, I like Mark said, you know, pre-ordering something nowadays, you really got to watch yourself because, uh, like now, I I have Game Pass. And two games that I bought, and I didn't even know, I had already pre-ordered them. And then the next thing you know, it's just like it's on Game Pass. Game Pass. So mm-hmm. I spent $60, $70 on yes. a game, and they're still sitting there in the plastic wrap. Right. I'm sitting there going... I, and but to, be, to be fair on that one, Microsoft, with the first-party stuff, did say they're doing that. I mean, that's yeah. been a thing since well, uh, one was, before the Series X came out. Well, the one was Halo Infinite. The other one was uh, yeah. Sniper Elite 5. Mm-hmm. So that wasn't first party, but I was just yeah. like, ah, I spent $60 and I didn't need to. But at the same time, I still look at Game Pass as kind of like, unless it's unless it's something that's first party, if it's something that they own, odds are it's never going to go off Game Pass. Mm-hmm. But yeah, right, I look at right. it as kind of like an extended rental, if you will. It's just like you never know when it's going to just disappear. That's the thing with Game Pass. You know, I completely so here's me i don't know this is just how i am uh with the the current systems right now ps5 is the only one i really buy physicals for there's a couple of reasons for that um game pass is a big one if i really like the game and i find it for a good deal physical i'll pick it up yep the problem is is that they also do the smart delivery gotta watch that that's not yep. even you don't even know the game with that um, and as you know that's, 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 that's why i got this and I returned the other one that I had because right. It, it, I remember it, you saying it, that. It, yeah. it said smart delivery, and I was like, nope. I, I took it back, and I said, I know. I'm like, well, why are you returning it? And the gal there, she was just like, she's like, why are you returning? I'm like, it says smart delivery on it. There's nothing on this disc. Yeah, and, I mean, it's just it's just a key to play yeah, a digital that's, game. That's so stupid. Just release so, it digital, man. Why? Why release right. a digital copy with a digital? The key? reason, they, absolutely, because they know there's people that only buy physical games. Still, a lot of people. I mean, I think that the last that's gonna, thing that's I gonna saw, get passed around, and eventually enough people are gonna realize, don't buy this version of the game. Well, and and that's oh, something man, that I, yeah, all the time though. The, well, that's something that there may be people that are watching that don't know what we're talking about. So and and yeah, so go over that. You, you know, so if you have an Xbox. An Xbox, let's just say an Xbox One game or an Xbox Series X game, and up at the top corner you'll see something. I don't have one. I have to have to go back there and get one. It'll say "Smart Delivery" on it. If it says "Smart Delivery," that is not a physical copy. You may have a disc in there, but all it is is a key that starts a download mm. from Microsoft, and that's it. Yeah. So if you want an actual physical game, make sure it does not say "Smart Delivery" on there. Otherwise. You're not getting so it's a one and done disc. code on that disc, then. Right, it's a one and done code, a code on the disc, and just like they had that outage here about four months ago when nobody could play for forty-eight hours. If it's a smart delivery game, guess what? Fuck. If there's an outage, you can't play. You can't just pop your disc in and play. You're screwed. <laughs> so that, what you're saying about smart delivery is one of a couple of reasons I don't collect a lot of physicals for Series X. Um, I first of all, if I do, I think I have, I have six physical games for Series X. All the rest are Xbox One, um, PS5. I've probably got like 37 uh, at the moment, and those have all been bought at deals. But the Series X stuff, Game Pass is one thing. Mm-hmm. I'm at that point where I'm like, it's you're, you're paying, exp- you, you know, I can pay for something I've already got digital that I can play right now, or pay for something else that I can't do that with. And if you're a gamer on a budget, you're going to say, hey, I can play this digital right now. If I find a deal on that physical later on, I'll grab it, 10 bucks. If not, let's grab this PS5 game that I know is on the disc. I don't have to worry about the smart delivery. There are other games that do that as well that don't say smart delivery on it. There's games that are coded in boxes. Um, 
There's yeah, games Nintendo's that are. Done that. So you, yeah. you have to watch. Yeah, you have to that. watch for that on Nintendo games too. And yeah. I forget. If it says I forget download. What, yeah, it says download. It'll have something the cloud on, on the top yep. and the white banner. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So those oh. are. You don't even own the full game. What you have is a not even finished game or you may not have the game at all when it comes to switch with those games so right and if there's anybody that. out there who is watching and when i was just kind of like okay does the switch version is it you know is it that or the other and my, my buddy nate who does work for gamestop i used to work for gamestop but he's a manager there mm -hmm. and he wasn't working there at the day and he said i'll check it when i go in on thursday i went on uh two or three different forums including game junction ohio retro gamer and a couple others and everybody was saying I, I just popped in my Nintendo Switch and it, and it started working. It's an actual it's an actual physical right. copy. And I said thank you. So anybody that's watching, thank you, thank to you for chiming in. Had to double check on my games to them for smart delivery. <laughs> tell you what, though, <laughs> you get, got him scared. <laughs> I'm like you know what? Let me here's check and see if I got. Something. I was like, oh shit! Hold on a second. <laughs> uh, to to be I, fair with this, kind of play devil's advocate at for collecting in 2022 with these new systems or. I just go with current gen. That's what it is now. Um, almost all these games have patches for them. Hmm. So you're playing a game without the patch. If you're going to play it in, I don't know, let's just say, for instance, 2050, online is shut off for the Switch. You can't get the patch. You're always playing a game that is, you know, has issues, whatever yeah. the patch was for. Exactly. And that's almost every game now. You just cannot avoid it. You cannot avoid a game that has a patch. So you're if you're wanting bikes. to play that in 25 years, you may not be able to patch your game. It, it, it could be an unplayable or unfinishable game. And there's a lot of games like that. So you just got to be careful with games. You just got to buy a game that's not broken at launch. <sighs> that's the thing. 90% of them are these out, days, though. They, just, they let it go. Broken. If it's buggy, but but it's, can you. you still play the game even with the bugs? Can I, can I beat the so, game? For instance, he was just talking about Sniper Elite 5. Sniper Elite 3. So I was playing my PS5 online when I put that in. It's a PS4 game. I put that in. I am telling you the uh, the f performance for that game, as soon as I started it up, just from the get-go without patching it, there's no way you could play through the whole game like that. If you do, you're torturing yourself. I will tell so you bad. a game. I'm talking... I will tell you a game that is extremely, extremely buggy, and they are com because it's coming out for the Switch, they are giving it a great update. And tons and tons of updates, and I believe that's the 23rd, and that's 13. The mm. remake? Yeah, yes. because I, yeah. I was going to be doing some... I was actually going to capture some footage for that about a week ago, and then I was just like, yeah. God, this is terrible. Why can't I... You know, there, were, there was a ton wrong with it. And then I found out, yeah. oh, there's, an, there's a huge, huge update mm -hmm. coming huge out. Huge update. They're going to be fixing tons and tons and tons of stuff. Especially, and the yeah. only reason why they're doing that is because it is coming out for Switch. I was like, well, I'm going to hold off on it. So I deleted whatever game capture I had, right. and then I'm just going to wait on that. So I and, guarantee, had that not been coming out for Switch, they would not have fixed everything. No, no, absolutely. no way. And that Nintendo's willing to put money at that game. It. Yes, that I agree with that 100%. Uh, yeah. Yep. I mean, it's crazy. I'm talking like with the patch stuff, I'm talking even. Probably 90% of my 3DS games need patched. Same with Vita. Almost every single game has a patch. And there have been, I can't tell you how many Vita games I've played pre patch uh, on Vita. It doesn't like give you an alert if there's a patch for it. You have to like manually select something and check if there's a patch. So I'll just sometimes jump in the games. I'm like, what's going on with this game? Performance is so bad. <laughs> I'll go back to the menu screen, hit the top of the icon. There's, a, there's been like five patches for the game. I'm like, okay. Yeah. I know there's so, a YouTuber that actually does games that way. He'll do like he'll he'll yes. um, disconnect his internet and play like games pre-patched and you know pre-upload or pre um, pre-updates and and man, some of those is just like there's no way, there's the game no is way, still in alpha. right? Yeah, exactly. Like they released it in I, alpha. Just, you know who does yeah. that? Or, You're right, Tony. That, that who does that? Like an interesting channel to watch. No, I, I yeah, don't know. I don't know the guy's name, but I know I've seen a couple of his videos before. I have to hunt for him then. Well, these yeah, games have gotten I, I, so huge. I think I've watched that guy. Well, these games have yeah, gotten go so ahead. huge, and, there, and there's so much code and, and everything. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not saying it, it, it's an excuse, mm -hmm. but it is a reason why a lot of this stuff ends up. <laughs> yeah, 
Exactly. It, it's why they come out <laughs> broken, and they're like, oh, you know, Cyberpunk yep. 27, you know, 2020, uh, 2077. Yes. Uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that's, a, that's different, okay. but I guess you say, like, a lot of the industry standard is release the game in beta, and by the time the launch days, we'll have a patch that mm, fixes most of the problems. Right. That's, like, they do. See, that's a problem with releases in 2022. That's what they do. They release a game that is not completely finished, and like, hey, you got a day one patch, make sure you install this patch. I'll see the tweets from these developers every single time for these games. Like, hey, make sure you do the patch, or you're not going to have, you're essentially not going to have either a playable game, you're going to have an unfinishable game, or you're just going to have a game that has a lot of issues pre-patch. Like, I don't like it, but it's just where, the, it's where the industry is right now. Outside of, like, Nintendo first-party games, it's where we're at. I mean, yeah. I, I can't tell you the amount of Switch games that have an update when I put them into. I mean, they all have an update, but a lot of them aren't like uber broken for the most part. But if I just play it right, right. away, I can I can still somewhat play the game. It's not yeah, as I broken as like is... Xbox or Sony, some other games. Right, are just unplayable essentially without the patch. Well, I think the last right. time I've been doing that, guys, I, I think Mark might have touched on that before. Nintendo is probably the only company with their first-person yes. titles that you are guaranteed about 99.9 percent that you are going to get something that does not need a patch because the game is broken or has right uh a, an extreme glitch in it uh i think that that boils down to one word and that one word also equivocates to, to a second word one is called pride nintendo has yeah. a little bit yep. of pride and because yes, they, they have do. that pride in something and in their brand that also equivocates to something else money and if yes. you have that pride in your brand, it's going to bring in that money. Because I mean, and, and what have they put on their games on the box art since the Famicom and NES? That the only Nintendo Nintendo. Nintendo. Seal quality, Seal quality. quality. Yeah. But I mean, part of that is right. as it stands right now. Maybe not then. It's uh, well. I mean, their first party games is really all that they've got right now. So if they release bad games, it's just going to push people away because they don't have those third party games that they can kind of keep afloat. I can say that there isn't a, a Nintendo Switch game that I bought that's first party that had issues. Uh, what it's always been for me, let's say um, Mario Strikers. People are complaining about that a lot. It's usually content-related things. Yeah. So they're like, hey, we didn't have uh, this feature content or this mode in the physical game without this update. It's not a, this game is buggy, this game is unplayable, play don't release everything. unfinishable. Yeah. If they don't release all the content that's related to that. So that's the issue they've been doing. I've only noticed that with the Nintendo sports games for the Switch, the mm. uh, Mario Golf Toadstool Tour. Um, they did that. And then Strikers. Tennis. People, people Tennis. are still crashing Strikers just because of the content that it's lacking. Absolutely. They'll get over it. But I, I just wanted to say is they but they do that, but it's not with like their first party, like their triple A games. It's with their like their their, their minor what do you want to call it? double A games or something like that? Games that most people probably aren't going to play. Or there's sports. Mario yeah. sports games are the only thing I've seen that with. Uh, even Breath of the Wild. Um, I played it on the Wii U, beat the whole game without even installing the patch. Didn't even know. Had no idea I did that. So, I mean, they that still tells do the, you that it's doable. They still do like DLC later, mm -hmm. but they're, 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 there's a core game that you can play without it. It just adds more, but that's. That's something you're never gonna get away from at this point. DLC well, stories just well, they're they're even adding another DLC harder. into uh, the village, I believe, right? And that with um, one of the, well, the things yeah. about the Tokyo show, they they announced yeah. they're doing another DLC for the the last uh, the winter family is gonna be leaving the village, I guess. Yeah, I heard yeah. a little bit about that, but I don't know any details. So that I know that's one of the things we wanted to talk about. What what's what's going on with that? That was so, I didn't I didn't read much about that either. I just seen that headline. I was like, oh okay, last last DLC I, I for the village you, moving forward. Right, I can tell you what I know that they have done. Uh, they've actually they actually started this with Resident Evil Five. Essentially, they'll release um, a a DLC for like more uh, expansion into the story. So like you're doing mm -hmm. like a prequel type thing for characters involved. Uh, okay. They'll do a DLC that is set after the game. And they'll do do a DLC that's bringing in characters that have been from other games, and they've done this since five. So those are like the three points that they hit. Uh, I can tell you with seven, um, who was it they brought in? I can't. I think it was Chris that they brought in with seven, a whole DLC where you're playing as Chris. Um, but that's essentially what they're doing. I think that this is going to be the 
I would assume that this is the backstory one. I haven't beat seven or played the DLC, so I can't. Or sorry, Village haven't played the DLC, so I can't tell you for sure. But I know this is the third one, and that's mm-hmm. usually what they do is a uh, a prequel or history of the characters involved. So that's what I know. But like I said, didn't do a deep dive. There was so much news, which we should might as well jump into. Uh, Tokyo Game Show. My goodness, keeping up with the tweets for that going on with those three days was insane. I'm telling you, news just rolling out constantly. Um, so much stuff was coming out for current things. Uh, there was a lot of retro that was announced. Um, so jumping in that, I can say one that, that we could talk about. Um, Retron is doing a turbo graphics slash PC yes. engine loan system. Um, I, I'm excited about that, but at the same time, I'm also like, I don't know. Retron is well, this for me. It, it is. It is Hyperkin, and Hyperkin's quality has never been stellar. Nope. And the only mm-hmm. the only no. Hyperkin product that I will that I will actually say, yay, I love it, is uh, my Retron seventy seven. Um, you know, it, it'll it'll play well. It out of the box without actually hacking it. Uh, we put out without putting a different version of Stella on it. It'll play everything out of the box except for something like. It won't play, it won't play homebrews, and it won't play like uh, Pitfall Two, mm. but everything else it'll play. The problem, the problem with those is that you you're you're not playing FPGA. You're you're emulating yeah. the game when you put yes, the card in. So that, also, that's the only, my problem. The other problem with it is you cannot you cannot use uh, you cannot play paddle games very well or right. at all I've, unless I've heard it that. is patched. And even though I have the, the patch on it, or, or a newer version of Stella and the hack, um, it's still, it's pretty shitty. So, I mean, if, if you're yeah. going to play Warlords, if you're going to play, you know, something like that that's going to be multiplayer, uh, you better get your old Atari and a CRT out or have a way to hook it up, you know, to a, you know, to a different system. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, if yeah. paddle games, it's not going to work. But I, I am very excited about I'm very excited about that, about that uh, Turbo Graphics. I, I am too. I um, I don't think I'll pick it up, and I don't usually don't pick up Hyperkin stuff uh, right away. Um, Let I the reviews think that come I'll out. Wait, see how it is. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, and also, I I don't care about playing it on a current TV. I don't care about the HDMI whatsoever. I want to play my Turbo Graphics. Either I'm playing my Turbo Express that I got to sit over there. Says the dude with all the fucking TV. CRTs in behind him. <laughs> yeah, right. Where's well, my... But you see, that's the thing is I used to have a Turbo Graphics back in the day, and it kind of went bye bye, and I wish it never had. It is bad boy. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's a boy. Um, ha- this is what ha- you do when you grab a Turbo Graphics. You grab ha- this ha- bad boy in your set. Has that been recapped yet? Yes, I've had okay, the cap and I've had the, um, the screen upgrade. Just the lens replaced. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I didn't do a screen upgrade on this one. The reason being is with this being a more expensive unit, um, I just didn't want to mess with it for this. Sure. But what I'm going to do is the PC Engine GT, which is essentially the exact same thing but cheaper. I yeah. am going to do a screen upgrade for that. This took me years to get. I- I'm talking, I wanted this for over 10 years uh, <laughs> collecting. So. I just got it last year, and I got it fully in a trade, so that was really cool. Nice. Otherwise, very nice. You're pitching out the seven hundred dollars for it, which is but, absolutely and, insane. But that's the thing, though, is if I were to go get a, a Turbo Graphics sixteen system right now, number one, it's not going to play my PC Engine mm-hmm. games if I have any, and then uh, it's yeah. also going to it's going to cost me. You know, I the last time I saw one sitting on a shelf, it was around one fifty, I think. Mm. And yeah, you know, um, and we're talking. Yeah, about we're talking. We're talking older, right, and we're talking older technology anyway. So yeah. if Hypergrin's going to come out with something that can play both, and if it's going to be fairly inexpensive, I'll go ahead and grab it. Otherwise, I may as well go ahead and get myself a PC engine uh, and and go ahead and get myself yep. an older Turbo Work graphics from there, and just go ahead and do it that way. Yeah. So if you're trying to jump into the library, absolutely. Um, you're working with older hardware, as you said. So eventually things are going to fail. You're going to have to get things fixed. You're going to have right. to get recaps like we discussed. Um, and then my only thing is I think that if you're interested in getting involved with the Turbo Graphics, 
the EverDrive supports both the PC Engine and Turbo Graphics. So I I think go that route. That thing's a hundred dollars. I don't know how much this product's going to be, but you have access to almost a thousand games, something crazy like that. Um, so and with this, you're having to use the physical carts. So you're going to buy every single one of those if you're. I don't right. know. I'm always looking at the budget option right now uh, with collecting. So right. That's the biggest depends. thing with and me. Obviously, that's the budget option right yeah. there. And here's the it thing. I, I am not, emulation. When it, when it comes to this stuff, I'm not the brightest light in the box. I mean, I, I'm, I mean, either. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that I actually got the, uh, some of the stuff that I got done, like just throwing Throwing the patch on an SD card and tossing it in the Retron, a monkey could have done that. And yeah, how, mm-hmm. I, how I ended up, you know, doing the hack on my, um, oh hell, now I'm trying to remember what what did I do the hack on? Um, I, I, I there's not the <laughs> so Sega many. Genesis Mini. No, it, there there so was many um, yeah, which there's Either another the PlayStation, another the Super Nintendo, 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 the original Nintendo. It was the PlayStation Classic yeah. and. The, the funny oh, yeah. thing is, yeah, I, would, yeah. I would have to actually, in order to add more games to it yet again, I don't remember what folder I have to put in so it can be transferred over into the correct folder, so I'd have to watch the damn tutorial again. Right. I'm just not that guy that remembers all that stuff. So it's like... It's, yeah. it's, it's I have like, to do I it, I have to do it more than once. If I do it one time watching a video, that's it. But if I do it like multiple times, like if friends bring their multiple stuff over times. to me... Then I can I'll then I'll get what. it and I'll keep it. But like if I'm just doing it once for myself, I'll forget the process completely. Well, there's a couple I, I'll friends tell you of what, mine. My first. Well, they, they, I'll go ahead. Say, there's a couple friends of mine who you know that they can do that stuff like the back of their hand. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, another same. friend of mine, he's he's the one that modded soft modded my uh, my PSP for me, and mm-hmm. and then I was just like, okay, great, you know. And but I I couldn't do that. I mean, I, I know. How they do it, I right. just I know I would end up with a brick. So <laughs> yeah. if there's somebody I, out there who can do that stuff, God bless you. I, I okay. So here is my little journey with that. So first ever drive device I got, which wasn't ma- one made by Crix, was the Jaguar game drive. Right? Yeah, okay. I loved Jaguar, huge supporter of that. So when I got that, I had a hell of a time getting games on that. I could not, I couldn't figure nothing out. Eventually, after four or five days messing with it i finally got it working i got discouraged because for some reason uh they're supposed to work on patches for that game drive but essentially the big thing was jaguar cd for me just because of the cost of some of those games Mm. well you have to take everything off i i had it until january sold it in january i had to contemplate um hanging on to yeah, I sold it for seven hundred dollars. I'm seeing them sell for twelve hundred right Jeez, now. You're talking about just, just, just the CD, just though, right? Just the CD. Just because yeah, the CD. If, yeah. Because if if you can I, find one that's working, that's a miracle too. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. They are the most failed system, or if you want to call it peripheral, I'd call it a system that's ever released. Well, I got this thing. I'm telling you, uh, nice. with the price of some of those like Atari carts, which is just a Super Mario, you know, a Super Mario Kart clone. Oh yeah, it's like five hundred dollars. I mean, Oof. it's wild. But uh, yeah, I I started with this, and I have uh, moved to. I did the Turbo EverDrive. I can do it now. The problem with this is you have to add Jaguar CD first, and you have to do it in a certain order for this to be able to work to actually play the games. It's super confusing. It's still not working properly. So I got really discouraged with that. But I moved from. That to the Turbo EverDrive had a little bit of problems with that, but when I got the GBA Mini, which was the first uh, Crix product I got, uh, you know, created the EverDrive, uh, I it was pretty smooth sailing from there. Yeah, those um, those dudes yeah, knew I mean, what they're doing when it comes to EverDrive stuff. Oh, if you yeah. if you Man, get anything with their logo on it, it's pretty pretty uh, pretty easy to work with. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it takes. It's, I would say a little bit of a learning curve, but if you follow um, a guide, it, it'll tell you what to do. I oh, still yeah. had issues because I'm weird. I want to make sure I have all like the box art when I pull it up. I Brandon, think, like, we know you happening. have issues. It's fine. We love you for it. <laughs> ah, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's my OCD, <laughs> I got box art on there. But, yeah, man, I uh, going back to what the topic was, that uh, TurboGrafx, 
I don't know what they're calling it. The Hyperkin is putting out. Seems interesting. I think it's a good thing for the community for people to jump in. And uh, you it'll definitely bring PC a new crowd. It'll Turbo bring a graphics. new crowd to those Turbo Graphics games because there was a lot of good Turbo Graphics games stuff that people will never buy to play. A lot. You know, and they don't really have a good emulating way to play it either. So, I think it'll it'll it'll, it'll uh, I think it'll uh, light some fires under some younger crowd. I think so too. I th- th- there was a little bit of controversy behind it because Hyperkin had announced and th- been discussing before about a turbo cd unit mm-hmm. that they were working on and now this this it was just turbo cd uh just because of the the cost for i guess the units uh and all that stuff right well this does not have a turbo cd attached to it and they still haven't given any information about turbo cd like unit so people are like a little bit confused so i'm not sure what's up it with could that be something i they work on that or anything they, they could, could do it. they could they could I mean, be doing an add-on for it later yeah. Imagine they add a CD attachment for this unit. I wonder if it has a spot to put a module or anything on it. That could be, be cool. super interesting. That would be oh, cool. That'd be great, yeah. man. Yeah. But uh, as far as retro, I'm trying to remember because I don't think I have anything else in the notes for that. We kind of scrounge to grab some stuff. But they did announce a lot of other uh, retro type stuff. I think that I saw about a new Superboy model which is their SNES handheld that they made. Um, I could be wrong about that. I think I saw about that. I know that um, some of the stuff was discussed for the, um, what's it called? That new, all oh, the new Evercade EXP. They were showing some of the uh, new games that are going to be coming out for the, uh, that unit, which I think it looks really cool. Um, it looks like an upgrade from the first uh, Evercade portable um and i think i heard rumors about another like an upgraded version of an evercade console like home console unit mm. so that's something that's been kind of going around but uh what would you is guys that, think in, uh, is that like in that the was... is the evercade home console kind of floating around there with the stadia it's like in that that b model console realm no um no the evercade has no physical cartridges made for it so it's a it's a retro unit with physical cartridges. The um, Evercade Portable was made first. Then they unveiled the um, Evercade Versus, which was essentially a, a home console with multiple uh, controller ports. Be able yeah, to play it, it on your it's TV. It's pretty cool. And yeah. you can... Uh, it's you great. Can, it'll also hold uh, two cartridges at the same time, so you can swap back and forth oh, yeah. whichever one you want. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, and if you... You can get get it for I think the one that comes with what one cartridge or I think it's one cartridge and one controller or something like that. It's like a hundred bucks, and for one hundred twenty yeah, you get hundred dollars. Like you get like two and two controllers or whatever. Mm. It's actually a pretty okay. good deal, and I had considered getting one when I was at C uh, uh, when I was at CAG, and I'll, and then I asked a couple friends. I was like, okay, I I, I have this. If I have this and if I buy that, right. and they looked at me and they said that's redundant. <laughs> because you can already do all of that. Damn. So I don't know. I'm telling you, these uh I don't know. I'm a sucker for the Evercade stuff. Um this handheld it, it serves its purpose. The handheld it has a much up, Yeah, it has a much upgraded screen from the other one. Pretty mm-hmm. pretty extensive long battery life. Um it's going to have a uh tape mode to be able to play your shooters. Which is cool. So flip it around like the Atari Lynx or something like that. Um, and and you know what it does too is that it both adds arcade compilations, home console compilations, things that have never been released, homebrew games, um, just all kinds of different stuff. And my only complaint is that it is mostly compilation cartridges. However, I have not noticed any issues except with the Atari Volume Two cart that I had issues with. Uh, for some weird reason, there was some superb lag in that game, but it had something to do with not having the original source code for games on that card or something. I looked into it, but um, even with a Raspberry Pi, I don't know. Every case serves its purpose for me. Um, I've had a Pi sitting in the closet. Actually, just sold it recently. Hadn't done anything with it. Um, I'm after getting like a Mister. I would like to do that, but the prices right now are ridiculous. So I'm not even going to dive into that. I no way that I'm 
Very expensive. I've been into a thousand dollars for a mister setup, but that would be the goal. That'd be the way to go if you want to be, you know, non emulation round, do FPGA, right. which emulation, I'm telling you, it's just hit or miss. There's some games you can't tell anything. You can't tell it's being emulated. And other games with crazy sure. lag, frame rates just bad. It's just, it's all over the place. What was that, Tony? Oh, <laughs> that's funny. Um, so uh, what would you guys, what'd you see as far as announcements that intrigued you for uh, Tokyo Game Show? That was probably the main thing that I saw that that really um, that really jumped out at me. Um, well, I'm, I'm actually looking at some of the yeah, Street Fighter Six looked really amazing. Yeah, um, so let's go ahead and dive into that. That's uh, one of the big topics I wanted to save. Um, Street Fighter Six. Let me tell you, they have been throwing teasers out almost daily for several weeks as far as characters, even if it's just something as simple as like a costume or a move. But they are uh, putting so much effort into the promotion for this game. But it's got me, uh, it's got me pretty hyped. As I, I kind of was concerned. Street Fighter V is hit or miss with people. Um, there are a lot of people that don't like it whatsoever. Um, I, yeah, go ahead. Three Fighter Four, <laughs> uh, three sixty and PS three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, it makes you think, like, hey, was he supposed to be, like, a comic relief character since he's the only one in the character selection for two and three that's lo that's like him? It's not, like, a humanoid character. So maybe that was, like, all always the attention. I don't know about that. That That is a good question. I, I don't have a clue with the, the deal. There's there's so much lore to Street Fighter that people don't even realize exists. There were comic books for it, manga, uh, anime, movies. I don't know if you ever seen Street Fighter in the movie, but you got to play it, and then you got to play, then you got to play Street Fighter in the movie, the game. Let me tell oh. you, God, God, yes, sir, God tier game. <laughs> that is that is a horrible game, horrible, horrible game. Oh God, but man, you just need to play it to experience it. It's like one of those games. It's like, how does it get this bad? But uh. Mm-hmm. On this point. Isn't it wild? The character animations are crazy, and that's what they're like. They're they're promoting that hard that the character animations are like I don't even know. I've never seen it in a fighting game. Some of the animations are doing and and the way that say um Ryu punches Ken or something, mm -hmm. the way that that character can react differently, there's something like over a hundred different ways that like that character can show that they're getting hit, so they're like right. adding all this various animation. But, but why? Why did why should I care about these animations? Here's why you should care. Because it's Street Fighter Six, there have been over a hundred Street Fighter games. What can you do different for a fighting game? Not what else can that. you do different? That seems like it's so a microscopically different thing. I think that, that what they're trying to do with this is because, like, like you said, 5 was kind of hit or miss. And then, of course, you know, we had like 19 different versions of Street Fighter 2. Yeah, literally. So, yeah, and um, I, I think, if anything, what they're trying to do is they're trying to step into the same kind of personality realm uh, that the game would have that, say, like Mortal Kombat has now. Because ever since Mortal Kombat stepped away from that 3D being able to move into 3D space and back into a 2D yeah. space, uh, the last three games, and, and they 
the last three games have been really good. Well, the last four, actually, even if you count the yeah. DC one, it's, it, it, mm-hmm. it was decent. Yeah, um, it was okay, yeah. Yeah, it was okay. Um, yeah. I, I think the, the DC thing is what brought it down because <laughs> they were trying to keep it so, you know, more family-friendly. Yeah. I and, and, that, and that's fine. But then they finally realized, you know, oh, well, we kind of screwed up with that. So with Injustice and Injustice 2, we'll kind of, we'll keep it family friendly, but we'll try still to fix up it. the violence. Yeah, it's the WB DC characters that, that was the reason with the Mortal Kombat DC right. game. But I, I think and, that uh, that's what they're doing with, the, with these guys. They're trying to get yes. up in that same realm. And I, I think it's about time that they do because I, I haven't given a shit about Street Fighter in a long time. So yeah, it, uh, this this makes me want to say okay, well, let's let's see what you've got. And that's not even the only thing. I was, if you just follow the account on Twitter, like I'm not a big Twitter guy, but I, mm-hmm. I have to be for Game Junction right now because that that's really working with promotion. Twitter does really well with game announcements, and a lot of those don't come to Facebook. If you follow any developers, any, any studios, Nintendo, PlayStation. Everything that they share out is usually tweeted first, and sometimes not at all right. like on Facebook and things. So they, almost daily, the Street Fighter account is sharing Street Fighter Six information. Man, what they're doing is just it, – it's insane. Essentially, they're adding a mode that is like a – I don't know. like a, It's not open world, but an adventure 3D mode for you to play the story where you design your own character. You play through the entire thing, whatever that story is. And you have you have your character there, and then you can use that multiplayer. So I mean, that's just something so, that's never been what, done. Kind of what I've seen game is just, wasn't wasn't there also like a battle um, zone kind of thing where like your character that you make was in like um, almost like an arcade the bat- setting. The battle yeah. hub. Yeah, the battle hub. Yeah. yeah so like your character is yeah. in an arcade setting, so it's almost like a me verse for your character to go into and hang out, check other people out, and then you can sit down in an arcade, and then you can get into a match with that other person. Now, that, to me, seems really fucking cool, because you can actually do your own matchmaking with people, or, like, say, if you've got four or five people, you can all jump in that hub together and play matches that yep. way, instead of just, oh, here's a loading screen, all of a sudden you're in a game with another person. and Like, you can actually walk up physically, talk to that person, hey, what's going on, man? Like, how you doing? And have a conversation with them, and then actually sit down at a cabinet and play a game. Yeah, yeah, that, um, that is that is so really I, game. I'm, that's a game changer right there. Mm-hmm. Being able yeah, to do something like that. It is. So Guilty Gear Strive, which is a new one that came out on like PS4 and PS5, did that same thing, but it's in a 2D plane. So essentially, you have like a battle hub. You can go up, set your own stuff up. You can just chat with people. Right. You can uh, set up like a whole room for a tournament. Well, so sim- that's, that's isn't that similar doing. to like a Monster Hunter? Doesn't Monster Hunter kind of do that? You have like a yes. whole world they do where you go exactly in, you get ready, and yeah, then all of a sudden you go in and click that, okay, I'm ready to do this mission, then four other people come in, and then you take off and go to the mission. Yeah, yeah, they do that. Um, Monster Hunter has been, man, I don't want to say they're the first, but man, they've been doing that since the PS2. The PS2 game, the first game, mm-hmm. you could do that with the PS2 online. So it's been a thing. I don't it's know about like sports games much these days, but I figure, I figure a lot of sports games will probably start catching on to that shit and doing the same thing. I think that would work out well with like some NBA stuff. Have like a hub, yeah. a hub gym. Well, I've never played that, just... but yeah, that would be cool for people that do. What was that, Mark? <laughs> I'm good. No, just like everybody, just like 100 people in like a gymnasium. It's kind of like, like before you like jump out of the plane and like any of these like... Uh, like Fortnite and stuff. Uh, yeah. Battle like, Royale. Just like in a big hub waiting for people to join. So you just, everybody's yeah. in a gym just, you know, shooting hoops. Trying to, trying to screw those people. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't, I can't tell you what the, the newest sport game did with something like that, but they haven't. Hey. They should. <laughs> Run around, just shoot some hoops, There's only some one, free throws. Uh, the only sports game I would buy at this point is whenever they bring back NCAA football. It's the only sport house. game I care about at this point. Oh, thank you, meds, Alexa. Tony. Yeah, thank you, Alexa. No, appreciate you that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I'd even play that. But have you seen NCAA 14, the price on that? It's Ridiculous. Wild. It's, oh, it's, it's wild. Insane, so it hits it hits like a roller coaster. At some points, it'll be up around like $120, $130. And then sometimes the PS3 version will be more or the Xbox 360 version will be more. 
But yeah, anytime I get that game, I just flip it, man. Cause like I literally, I talked to a guy out here in Winder, Georgia. Okay. Winder fucking Georgia, who still plays that game on Xbox 360 and gets updated rosters for it. So he's in a clan of people. What? Yes, he's in a clan that of people. Intense. Yeah, they do that. He's in a clan of people. They have like 12 or 13 people that play this game every weekend, and they have an updated roster for it. And he he's like, dude, my I play it so much, my disc quit working, so I need that copy, and here's a hundred dollars. And I was like, thank you, <laughs> thank so you. I just <laughs> saw where they tweeted out that they're doing the um, 2023 update for that. So like, people are playing that with updated rosters every year is wild mm-hmm. that's my only like fascination yep. with that it's like wow. i didn't know that they were still updating the rosters so i just yep. thought it was like no, okay no. that was a lot it's a, that was it's a, a fan one. thing so like pe- there's like a team of people okay. behind it that are doing that it's not like you know official okay so release, not. but yeah he doesn't care about the game but no of course they would, but i was like how in the hell is that happen? okay that makes sense <laughs> It's cool that somebody cares enough about playing college football that they're doing that. I mean, right. there's obviously enough people in, there's, interested that it's still going on. So, it's, They only do it because there hasn't been a new game in forever. But they did. The prices have dropped on that because they announced that they're bringing it back. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I remember 2020, a point where that game was hitting like, like 150 on that. 150, 160. They announced Christmas the time. I remember Around seeing... Christmas time, it goes up a lot. Yeah. Now, now I remember it's it. coming back. Watch it crash. It will crash its oh, ass off. It's gone down a lot. I see those for mm-hmm. like $70 all day now. Yeah. So. But, yeah I mean, the people that did. want it, they'll spend the money and not care because, like, I got the game. It, it's worth the money to them, so they're not going to regret it. Right. I, yeah. I will tell you one of the things I'm pretty excited about. And thank you, Shane, for mentioning that because I forgot to put it in the notes. Uh, Suikoden 1 and 2 HD yes. remasters. What are you guys' thoughts on that? I, I just can't even say how excited I am about that, but it's actually getting any attention. I hope it, might, it's not a bot. it might draw me into playing it. I haven't, I've never even played the originals, so I'm kind of interested. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. You guys would, yeah, I, 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 I do know, especially for you, Mark, you would love that. Tony, you probably would. I know we talked about the turn base, but. It's, it's, no, they're good say, games. There was one game at the uh, Tokyo Game Show in 2022 that I was interested in, and it's a Samurai Maiden. Mm. I don't even know what that is. Exactly. <laughs> I found like the one game that nobody talked about. I'm like, oh, it's, there's girls, Samurai? I'm sold. <laughs> I'm looking that up as we speak. Uh, Scott, do you have any um, experience with Sweeping in 1 and 2? Nope. Absolutely not. You probably wouldn't enjoy it at all anyway. With the, not no, not that turn based RPG. No. Yeah. No. I, I I wondered if maybe you just played one of the games, but no. The the only way that I would actually have anything to do anything to do with anything turn based like that is if a girl was playing it, and later on we were going to be doing something like going out or whatever. And if I was dating her, I had nothing to do with turn based at all, and, and never ever ever interested me <laughs> and i think that's just because when you know when when the original nintendo came out that's when that that kind of stuff was coming out and i i never owned original nintendo not for many many years after the nintendo was gone i mean uh i i my last system was a commodore 64 and then anything in between i didn't have until the genesis came out so it was just like turn-based RPGs. Those are not my nostalgia, and that, that's how, probably how come I can't get into them because, in my opinion, if I want to play something where I'm going to be rolling the dice like Dungeons & Dragons, I better be playing Dungeons & Dragons. Yeah, um, I get it, especially now. Um, I mean, I know Tony can relate. I know you can relate. Being a parent, turn-based RPGs are hard to play right now. It really is hard to get I back into like- them these days. It is just because of the time commitment, and and nine times out of ten, mm-hmm. you gotta grind in those games. Grind your level up. Um, action RPGs yeah. you just kind of go straight in, go through the game. You got your RPG elements while just right. hack and slash or just running through the level, platforming. Um, action RPGs do take a step above turn-based for me this year, um, and actually have probably for the past couple of years just because. The time commitment those take. I can remember, fantasy, or Final Fantasy three, 
uh, the grind on that or Fancy Star 2, the grind, absolutely insane. That's, um, that's exactly it. The, the, the turn base and the grind is what turns me off. You know, give me something like a Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, a mm. Diablo, Diablo yeah. 3. That more action um, action style, you know, yeah. moving action. around constantly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, g- give me something where I'm cutting something open and okay. moving on. You know, I, I'm good. But just sitting there going, tap, 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 tap. Oh, you got a three. Tap, tap, tap. You know, and like, yeah. I just, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything for I, me. The only ones I can say that I can go through to not have the issues, especially with the time, which I know you guys don't care about at all. But the uh, Pokemon games are the only ones that continue with the turd base that make it easy to be able to kind of jump in and out. Battles right, aren't it makes long more sense. unless it's, yeah, it's not, um, it's not a long, extensive battle unless it's, you know, an important battle. So uh, that's, that's one for me that I can just easily jump into. And I actually... Like, when I view those games, I don't even think of them as a turn-based game. Yes, it is. Welcome back, But Mark. to me, it's more of the adventure game and uh, the elements of that. So, I don't know, man. Sweeping in 1 and 2, though, this gives a uh, opportunity for people to experience it. Mark, Tony, perfect time, sounds like. Uh, yeah, hopefully that, that, they, that, they do it See, justice. now, that would be something I'd probably actually pick up and take on, uh, and play on my Switch, you know, when I get back to work and hit my lunch break for an hour or something like that and be able to put that hour into it on my lunch and try it out because sure. it's definitely sure. something i want to try um but speaking of dungeon and dragons there's actually a, a ps2 uh uh psvr2 game that's coming out that's very uh based on dungeon and dragon inspired i oh, believe really? it's, yeah i believe it's uh the name is demio d-e-m-e-o uh developed by resolution games uh, they said they're trying to keep the dungeon and dragon inspired co-op adventure uh, but you're going to play it with more you know in a vr setting so I, I'm I'm actually kind of interested to see how that turns out because that seems like a uh, a VR game that I would actually really like to play. So it's got haptic feedback in yeah, the controllers. But... Um, so I, I'm kind of curious how they would do that one. Whether you would actually be you know your character in that realm, hacking and slashing stuff. <laughs> you know, like am I the necromancer running around? You know, uh, it, it, that seems like pretty cool i mean i'm all for a new experience with that i never got to try like the skyrim vr I always wanted to try that but mm-hmm. hey it might be cool we Anything gotta get we gotta get you guys a quest <laughs> we need to do a podcast from the metaverse <laughs> i how about vr chat it. it looks better i can be in uh, vr chat works so bad it's not bad it's actually pretty it looks fun because you can. When I watch YouTube videos. It's a really fun game. You just have to Especially find a room that doesn't have five thousand little kids in it running around drawing dicks uh, with all the little lasers. I yeah, not about it outside I, of the YouTube videos. I don't want to see five thousand little kids, nor do I want to see Sylvester Stallone and Sandra Bullock doing whatever they do in VR. So. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm glad so, you got like my thing, but who knows. <laughs> There are some pretty neat. There are some pretty neat things though, because like uh, the one of them was the theater. You can go in, so like you can just pop into a theater and you're actually watching like a screen, you're a big out, screen sorry. movie. My internet's so bad here. It's so bad. Oh, you're good. Um, yeah, that's yeah. I've seen that where you're watching mm-hmm. like in the theater with other people. Yep. That's pretty cool, man. I could get down with that. There was one but I was watching a 3D UFC fight. Oh, dude. Oh, that'd be That's cool. cool. Yeah, so you're like you're like standing That's on a good. balcony and you're looking out over like a over the ring basically. You're almost like the camera guy standing on the side of the ring and you're looking out over the ring and you can see them fighting and they coming towards you and you can kind of like change your position around the outside. That was that was a pretty neat little experience. That's wild. I've never heard of that. That'd be cool. Yeah. I've heard of them doing like the sports events stuff, like at mm-hmm. least it being talked about. Yep. Like standing on the sidelines of a football game or basketball game. I've heard of that. And do I they put, do that? I put the virtual now? boy. I got the virtual boy emulator into my Oculus now so I can play all the virtual boy games. Yeah. Yeah. Play some play some Jack Rose and Wario Land. That's what but you But the play. cool thing about it is you can actually <laughs> change you can change the colors. You can you can play it in the classic red or you can change colors to like green or gray. Um, that way it's a little more eye pleasing for everybody. It doesn't give you quite that headache, but it even <laughs> states like as you're playing it, it says, uh, please don't play these games for more than 30 minutes may cause headaches. It's like, really? You had to put that in there, huh? It's like every game ever. Yeah. Well, didn't, doesn't yeah. The, vir- didn't the virtual boy also say that? I believe it did. Like I when you, did. when you started the games, yeah. yeah Cause it was a, there was a big problem with it. 
every single game uh, had to have that stated for mm-hmm. it. So I don't think there's a single. I don't remember what the Japanese games because I got three of the Japanese exclusives, but I for sure know that every North American game had that. Oh yeah, it's like hey, warning! You play more than fifteen minutes, man. You might lose your eyesight. <laughs> you might go wild. <laughs> Gotta love the virtual uh, yeah. boy. I, I love I, that's probably my other system I'm super passionate about is a virtual boy. Um, man, if they have uh, an emulator or something for hyper fighting on that, you got to put that on there because that's a uh, that's a homebrew Street Fighter game they made for Virtual Boy. Hmm. And I've always wanted to try that. Physical so, is like so nine hundred dollars. If you can actually find a ROM for it, I can just download it straight into the headset. That's what I did. I literally went on like Pirate Bay and that downloaded be... like all the whole library for Virtual Boy. So it's, it's literally <laughs> all in the headset. If they've got a ROM for it, I can just drop it in there and play it. I'll see if there is one. Uh, yeah, like you said, the physical is crazy expensive. They only ever did one run of it, mm-hmm. and it's Street Fighter Two on the Virtual Boy. So nice. I'm down for that anytime. <laughs> But uh, was there anything else from uh, Tokyo Game Show that kind of treated anybody's interest as far as that? There was one more game uh, that I, they they had spoke about, uh, the Awakener. I, well, actually, Awakener? I don't know if that I don't know if that was at the Tokyo Game or not, but it's called Awakener Risen. It's a new RPG from a Chinese indie was. developer. Um, oh, yeah, I think it was there. I remember yeah. seeing something. So like they it. they showed a bunch of yeah, different classes. Sure it's kind of like your 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 um, Diablo style. Uh, looking game it looked really really good um what it's caught like me though dungeon crawler yeah, game, yeah right? exactly so I'm, I'm watching it i'm like okay cool dungeon crawler i can get into that and then all of a sudden uh they show the character flying on a dragon and i'm like fuck yeah i'm in and then they show uh airship battles and i'm like oh sold whatever the hell i don't take my money just as soon as it comes out i'm ready to buy that you, you can fly around in an airship and take fight all my money you can fight in an airship and you can fly on dragons i'm down I'm down. Yeah. It looked it looked really cool when I saw. Um, I don't know much about. I don't think they said anything really about the story that they. At least not. Not I much. Saw. No, it just kind of showed a bunch of like the character classes and then like some cutscenes of, uh, like the dragons yeah, and the I, airship. I'm, look, I'm looking through the trailer right now. It looks freaking amazing. Yeah. It, <laughs> it, so I was like, I see a dragon. So I'm buying it. Pre order. I don't know right if now. you can see it on my camera, Man, I'll but I'll uh, tell you. Uh, yeah, I got a dragon on my forearm, got a dragon on my shoulder, on my back. I'm I'm all about the dragons, man. Let's bring some more of that. But I don't want to kill the dragons. I want to use the dragons. My dragon says Levi's. <laughs> I want to fly on that dragon. Yeah, that looks yeah, this, really cool. For sure. This this looks very, very good. Yes, yeah. It's, it's like a like a Diablo meets other stuff i don't even really know it just looked good <laughs> it, oh it has, no it gave me like diablo 3 vibes for sure yeah of course the um, character classes like that's you know always a big big plus and baldur's gate God. what if they did another baldur's gate man that those games i i love those games i've been wanting a new baldur's gate for ages yeah mm. i mean they came out with that one here last year was it last oh, year oh yeah 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 and yeah. Yeah, and it's Flop. not it's not the same thing. Good. Isn't it? Isn't uh, it first person? And you can only play it single player. I think. I thought I it was a party. I thought you could team up part. and party with people. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can. Can you? But I know it had a lot of issues and uh, perform. I have it here. I put it in one time, which is saying something because that that is uh, the first game that I ever. My dad just kind of hit or miss with me, but um. That was like what the first game I actually beat with him. Sat down and beat, and it's just a great game. So like I oh, had wait, like you know what? a special place. I'm thinking of Dark Alliance. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's it, the it was, second one. But uh, it was because uh, Baldur's Gate, Dark Alliance, and Dark Alliance Two. I really loved those on yeah. PS2, Xbox. I, I, I and then oh, of you're course. Thinking... Yeah, yeah uh, but I, I know what but, you're thinking. But, I, I got gotcha. you. Well, what was the game? It was. It was like Dark Alliance something, and it came out, and it was a big flop, too. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. So I don't remember what the title that was, but yeah, that was a... Uh, yeah, it just wasn't a good one. <laughs> that didn't hit well with people. I, mean, I think they've only had really those two two big hits, and then they're just trying to recreate that and not get down with Dungeons, 
Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance. There it is. And yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it was yeah. trying to. Yeah, it was trying I to be. A, I have that on PS4. Yeah, I know, I, I got you. Yeah. Yeah, I it, it looks like that. I, if 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 I were to get hold of this like really dirt cheap, as a matter of fact, I think it's on Game Pass if I'm not mistaken or was. <laughs> right. Uh, I I check it out, but it it's not it's not a it's not a dungeon crawler, and that's what mm -mm. Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance was. It was, exactly. a, it was a damn dungeon crawler. So don't go changing it up on me. And you know, Mark's dying. Don't turn, don't, yeah. You know don't 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 turn Dark Alliance into a a volleyball game. All right. <laughs> right. Hey, what's wrong with? I love volleyball games. We got hot shots of Dark Alliance. Extreme. Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball. Yeah, man. That's the I, best I, game to ever release. I, <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Give me more of that. Don't give me Dark Alliance Volleyball. More, I more want. boobies. <laughs> we need more boobies. As long as there's tits That's on the screen. You know, you get, give, us, give us a bunch of bodacious uh, tatas and, and we're good. Um, otherwise, hey, if you show me a bunch of... I'll stick with my Super Spike V-Ball. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I have that one. That's been a minute since I played that. Yeah, uh, Super Spike V Ball wow, was my wow. favorite volleyball game ever created. That, that was, was just so good. That's a good one. That Super was a good Spike one. Super Spike V Ball. Which yeah. one was that on? I uh, NES, uh, Xbox. No, no, no. Oh, okay. I'm talking. So I'm going I'm back. I'm of, going back. Like, I'm thinking of this then, because it's called Super. Yeah, hold on. Well, actually, I might decline to get that. There was a there was like a I, I limited know, run. I think there was a limited run PS4 version. I think they called Super Spike or something like that. Yeah, that's what. But no, I'm talking about Super I, I Spike know. V Ball. Old school. Super Spike. Yeah, that. Like that's eight bit animations. <laughs> yeah, that game's not. If, if I remember right, I think I just played it like a few years ago. I didn't like that game, man. Uh, <laughs> I did not like that game. It takes I a little getting used to. Double dribble and some uh, basketball. Yep, double dribble know, was good too back in the day. It's really oh, I love the hockey game, you know, NHL, what, 95, 96? I think, mm -hmm. or maybe it's 94, 95. Yeah, man, I love some of those. But uh, so what you're saying is volleyball peaked in 88. <laughs> Eventually, yeah. I will say, Mark, volleyball peaked with the boobies. The game earlier. The Samurai Maiden actually looks like a pretty solid game. Yeah, I thought it, it looks kind of cool. Yeah, that game looks really. I didn't even see the announcement for that. It's from a developer I've never heard of. But not like twenty minutes yeah, ago, yeah. Where we were talking about just strolling through with some some of the uh, games that were announced, just like lists. I googled it. Yeah, everybody it. should definitely check that one out. That looks pretty solid. Comes out um, in December. That's crazy. Yeah, that looks that looks really good. I didn't see that announcement. That's wild. Oh, yeah. uh, it's probably just a small <laughs> game. Hey, yeah. mine went to bed finally. <laughs> Mine's well, in bed this, too. This one's getting ready to go to bed, so give me just uh, a minute here. I'll be right back. Absolutely, very good. Hey. Um, so moving on to, uh, well, I want to say like I get we already talked Street Fighter Six. That was one of the bigger ones, but mm -hmm. uh, the last uh, physical 3DS game shipped out, and I oh, did. Yeah. I'm not gonna pull out the other two, but. I did get my double pack for them yesterday. And Shane, I Shane said something about uh, Elysium Chronicles. Don't you all heard about that? Ooh, I did I have hear not. about it, but I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't recall what was said about it. Um, but I'm yeah, I did see that one, Shane. But yeah, that's that's one that was announced. Um, yeah, the last two physical 3DS games. So I know Tony's not a handheld guy, but. Um, to have physical games for the 3DS in 2022 still dropping is wild. Yeah, and it's only number three of the 3DS games that they put out, and have the other one up there. That they, but this only this, I guess it's two games they put out together. This only makes three games they ever put out for the 3DS, and there is probably not going to be any more releases. This one was kind of a surprise one that like popped mm. out of nowhere from Limited Run. And it's the first game I've ever got from them that was ready to ship when you order it. Nice. Like, I bought it. It was done and ready. Like, they had this planned out. And I wish that they could figure out a way to get closer to that with all the other stuff. Ah, good luck. I'm telling you, <laughs> waiting 15 months on the Scott Pilgrim, let me tell you, and dropping almost $200 on that, 
I was like, so do you guys do you guys have a limited run store anywhere close to you at all? I'm just curious. There's only one location. And it's the one in South Carolina then, right? Yeah, yeah, that's all. Okay, so this weekend they had a big uh big trade event up there. Yeah. Yep. A lot a flea market. A lot of our guys went a lot of our vendors that come down to the game central station. Yeah, they went up there to that uh, the flea market they have up there. It's like a big one day event. Shit, there was people apparently camping out overnight for that shit, and like waiting at their Did door. Did you hear about it? They only got ten percent off. Ten yeah, percent off. Yeah, they sent wild, uh, dude. Johnny. Yeah, when I I got mm-hmm. the email on it, and I was just like, oh, this is, and it, I saw it was going to be there, and I was like, oh well, screw that, I'm not going. But ten percent off, that's North that's, Carolina, that's, North that's Carolina. It. Yeah, that's, that's not it. worth the wait. No, I'm curious if anybody's heard any feedback about that event because I haven't heard anything post. I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot of our guys uh, post like their pickups and stuff from there. Um, I haven't heard. I did hear last year. Apparently, there was a big uh, big store that um, we know a guy that works at. They made like ten thousand dollars up there in one day, um, just selling shit. So I mean, it's apparently apparently their little flea market gig is getting really big. But That's they buy cool. they this buy your the used games as well, so like you can you can literally take a ton yeah. of your games up there, and they'll buy the shit from you and sell it in their store. So I mean, they're becoming yeah, they started a game all store games a couple months ago. Yeah, you know what would be cool? Uh, it would, it kind of would be cool for them to have kind of a chain of stores, like try to hit at least every fifty states. Because mm-hmm. I don't care what anybody says about limited run, because I have my own opinions. Because trust me, I've waited forever for games, so I know. But um, they still put out quality stuff, regardless of the wait time, regardless of whatever that's going on in the scene. They put out quality stuff. There's there's games that would never have a physical otherwise. So right. like, can you can you hit them for that? Like, this game literally would never have a physical copy. You'd be stuck on the digital eShop. Yeah. Ten year, you know, twenty years later, unplayable. And right. It's, it's gone. Look at the Wii. There's oh. there's games that I completely regret not having had picked up that have never been released otherwise, have no news on ever being released, and they're I'll just say, they're gone to time. I'll say this. I'm surprised they haven't like a competitor hasn't arisen to like compete with them. For a limited run? Yeah. Or am I like missing oh, something? Because I only oh, know about like, limited run. There's like there's three different there's... limited release type type things. Yeah. Are they the same level? Limited, there's because you only ever really hear about limited run games, as far yeah, as they're being... not. None of them are on the same level, but if one is close to them, it will be strictly limited, which they yeah. just put out. Because I, I only ever hear about I don't, that. I'm not like super into that that market, but I only ever hear about them when I do hear about stuff. That's like the that. only one you'll hear about. You just assume it's... you just assume nobody else exists, right? Yeah, there's there's several. Um, yeah, I've there's bought, Idea um, Factory. Multiple. There's uh, Axis Games. Uh, I forget the name of the one right offhand. And then, like you said, Strictly Limited. And then there's another one. Um, there's a, the one that just put out, they've had like 10 releases total. They put out Super Blood Hockey. They put out, um, man, I cannot remember the name of them. I bought Super Blood Hockey, but let me see. I got the collectors, so it's up top. Um, but yeah, there's, there's Strictly Limited just put out a game. Um, pre-orders just went up today. I do believe they're already sold out now. Because it's a game that never got a uh, release on systems. Uh, it's called Cannon Dancer. Um, yes. That's yeah, yeah. I I could pull it up. I just got the last email for the final wave. I'm I'm sure it's sold out. Yeah, but, it should um, be by now. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was uh, that was earlier today, wasn't it? The, the, yeah, the... that was today. That was today, and I'm I am beyond disappointed about not being able to grab that because <laughs> fighting game I've not gotten to play. Um, literally would not have released on consoles now or even given any attention had it not been put out by them. So these these some companies do good work for the game community, but some of their practices and the way they handle things <clears throat> aren't so good. Um, and they're – you're good. Um, yeah, I'm trying to pull that up now. I'm sure <laughs> they're put out at this point. God, I'm just losing everybody. I'm I know. Here. I'm, I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm a little uh, – I think I've- I think I've got a little fun it up bro. now, but I'm sure that it's gone. But uh, yeah, I mean they they, they do good stuff. So- yeah, it's, it's no actually the the regular copy is still available. The collector's edition is sold out for Cannon Dancer, but it's mm. games like these that were stuck either on the arcade or systems that people don't even know about or 
Uh, even and they just do, stuff I mean, NES, you know, I'll give them credit. They do decent ports on shit like that as well. It's not like they don't just kind of slap it on a disc and they're like, here you go, good luck. Like, I mean, they, right. they, they flush it out and they do decent work with it, you know. Well, I, you know, I, I know this is, this is completely unscheduled, but I do have something over here from Strictly Limited, and uh, I've not even opened up the shipping box yet. If you'd like, I won't even tell you what it is. I'll go ahead and open it up yeah. live on camera. Hey, Absolutely. live exclusive. Live on Hang on. Live Only exclusive. here at the Game Junction Podcast. Exactly. The Game Junction Stric- Strictly Podcast. Limited. I'm going to strictly limit your ass, Tony. <laughs> hey, 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 now we get freaky. <laughs> After dark. Mark, I, we got to figure out the situation I think, being frozen I, and, the entire podcast. He's I'm not. Pretty sure, I see him. I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure this is the, the, right, the right box I'm opening it up. If, if <laughs> hey, not, maybe. I'll, I, I'll, I'll open up the other. Though, if it isn't. So. Okay. Oh, no, I cut into the game. Shit. I always freak myself out when I do that shit because I don't know how people pack stuff. Sometimes I'm like, oh my god, if he packed right. this thing wrong and I cut it with this razor, I'm going to be so pissed. Well, this this I bought through... I've had four stories of mail calls, man. Well, I bought this through Castlemania. Yes, this is what I wanted to open. Oh, hell yeah. Nice. Is it the Genesis cables? There's the shirts. Oh. Hey. oh you got that, bro? Oh, oh god. I wanted and... that so bad. That's beautiful. There it is. Ooh, oh, that is sexy. fancy. Genesis, Genesis goodness. Oh, that look at that. Fancy. Gosh yeah, what, dang, dude, that be, is so cool. Would it be weird so, to say I have a raging heart right now? <laughs> I'll, I'll be eating no, this oh, footage for, for my channel. So boner. <laughs> right, yeah, for sure. But yeah, I mean, this uh, is I'll trade, uh, trade you a blood omen for it. <laughs> Yeah, I, so, you know, that was kind of funny, too, because I was like, oh, cool, Blood Omen. You know, he, Brandon's like, I have a few things I want to get rid of. I'm like, oh, Blood Omen 2, that's, that's great. I've been wanting I'm like, no, I already have that one. And the one I'm looking for is Legacy, uh, not Legacy. Um, Soul Reaver. Uh, Soul, Soul Reaver, Reaver too. It was like, oh, shit. So, yeah. yeah. So, sorry that's about that. That's a cool pickup, man. No, you, you're good. Yeah, yeah. That, that's really, really cool. And, and the thing is, that it's is, like, uh... I, I want to open it, but at the same time, I know I can emulate it. So, it's kind of like... The, the thing is with that one, with that being such an expensive Genesis game, and, and obviously this is going to hold and increase value as well with it being a, re, I guess, reproduction, but official right. one. Um, I, I probably wouldn't because there's a way no. to do that FPGA. So emulating that would be different for me. I'm, like like I said, hit or miss with that. And if it's a, sh- if a shooter or a shmup with emulation, man, I've had some bad experience. So if there's a way to do that, uh, say the Ever Drive for Genesis, go that way, man. Well, that's like Xeno Crisis. I, I've been wanting to buy that, and if you're going to try mm-hmm. to find that physically, the old, mm-hmm. and they, they have it for everything. They have it for Dreamcast. Yeah, I got it want, for Switch. I saw yeah, that, yeah. The only thing that's affordable is for the Evercade. I mean, you can still get it for $20, yeah. yep. but if, if you <laughs> try that, to get it for the Switch. Of the, uh... Is it? Yeah, you can. Yeah, it's packed with uh, another game, another Genesis homebrew. Um, okay, you know, I, see, I called, but yeah, the, I, the Evercade version. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I guess I'm gonna doing, have like, to get that because I love that game. Well, here, here's the thing about Evercade: all their their carts are priced at twenty dollars. They don't increase a a cart mm-hmm. price because of something. Like, so you can get a cart with sixteen games on it, say Atari, or you can get sixteen games from. I do believe they've done. Uh, I think they've done Car- Commodore 64 carts now. Yes, they have. They have a MSX collection. Okay, so yeah, they'll have like uh, carts on that. So, but they they're starting <laughs> doing homebrews, which is cool because that's a way for some person that doesn't have a Dreamcast anymore and trying to get this homebrew that's only for that. They're bringing out on this. They're like, hey, I want to get into some retro action. Here's the Evercade, twenty bucks. You're all in on that. So. That's that's my view on that, but that is sick, man. I love that. Um, definitely did want to hit some other things. Tekken Eight. Did you guys see the uh, the announcement on that? I did. I did not, I did not. I didn't. I I, I seen the. Uh, I watched a couple of trailers for it just a little while ago, and I mean, I'm kind of. You kind of said it earlier. 
and it's like, what more can you do with a fucking fighting game? I mean, literally, Tekken has been doing the same thing now forever. I'm kind of just over yeah, it. Yeah, Tekken, uh, Tekken's a different one for me. There's a lot of hype on this one just because we haven't had a new game for a while. The thing with Tekken, they the only like sub-series, at least that I'm aware of or has been talked about, is their tag tournament, mm-hmm. which they only did two of. But right. Tekken has not gotten the kind of releases that Street Fighter has. Facts. So to be to be fair with it, uh, yeah, we're at Tekken Eight, but their sub series are like super super minimal. So mm-hmm. why the Tekken Seven was three sixty, I believe. I don't think they got Tekken Seven on PS4. I know I'm looking at six. I never picked up seven. I played it, but I believe that was also a three sixty game. I could be wrong on that, but it's been mm-hmm. a long time since we got right. it. Uh, a Tekken game. So people were kind of like, hey. Let's see what they're actually going to do with the series. It is uh, well, I'm hoping they I keep the graphics a little more, a little more like a realistic style graphics, where like yes. Street Fighters yeah. kind of went more of that comic booky, like artsy aesthetic style with it. I kind of want yeah. like in you know Mortal Kombat's always just got its Mortal Kombat kind of styling, but I want like mm-hmm. an actual, oh god, what is like kind of like King of Fighters or something that's like more like a realistic style, I guess. Well, from the from the yeah. screenshots that I'm seeing here, it it does have a, a little more of a realistic look mm-hmm. to it as opposed to yeah. something that's more cartoon like. Right. Um, and it it does have that kind of Sony looking flavor to it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it, looks, yeah. it looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's uh, it definitely looks more realistic. They're hitting the story aspect of it super hard. Um, I think it has. I could be wrong on this, but I think I remember seeing, like, Yakuza characters in it. So, the guy, I can't remember his name, from Like a Dragon, I believe is in this game. But they showed very little about it. They showed a couple screenshots. Right. Of, like, the the title for it. And yeah, and they got, like, an opening get, scene, like, uh, like, a quick little fight yeah. scene between two characters. Yeah, we didn't get anything like the Street Fighter Six, So, it's very little information Still on it. Still teasing what it. was shown. Yeah. I mean, it was like a... Less than two minute announcement wow. trailer or something. So, you, 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 yeah, this is a minute fifty two seconds, and it's badass looking. Yeah, I'm telling that's, you, and that's dude. that's what I'd seen, and I was like, that looks good. But like, and they show like some of it looks like it could be like part of the actual gameplay fighting itself, mm-hmm. mixed yeah. in with like yeah. a lot of cinematics as well. That was one of the things that was shown where they were trying to essentially like not be able to tell the difference. Mm-hmm. I know that that's what they were trying to do because I could see when it was switching in the gameplay, but just barely. Right. You just barely tell the yeah. difference. So we're reaching that point where a cutscene is the game, which is crazy because we're only two years in on this current gen now. So mm-hmm. uh, it's showing already two years in. Got to keep one up. Man, I'll that. tell you what. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it looks cool. Yeah. I got a question. I don't know. Don't remember if this game was brought up uh, about the uh, Sweet Coden One and Two HD remasters. Like it's apparently it's an old PlayStation game. Yeah, we were talking about that just a little bit ago. Okay. I could I could remember. Not, I was I've been in and out a little bit. That's like half hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We hey talked man, about that. we're going on three hours. Hey, Sometimes you I'm just talk about yeah, stuff again. We talked about like a lot, some of these what, are like what, smaller what, games. I was trying to bring up, so I wasn't sure. What's uh, in the cup, Mark? Right. What What's in the cup? Yeah, yeah. What cup? you drinking over there? Pepper. <laughs> Uh huh. Hey, I'm five in, bro. I'm. I'm rolling, though. <laughs> I gotta hey, be up I in the morning. I'm not drinking. I only really. drink. I don't even. I only drink on podcast days, though, and I just uh, enjoy it with the chatter and the, the stress. I'm a, it's fun. I'm a pussy, kids. This is just iced tea. If I'm gonna get the Sammy's mm. uh, beach rum out, I better have a coke with it. So. Should I? Should I break Man. out my sake? I got a bottle good of sake old, back. Good old here. ice water. Yeah. Hey, I podcast days are my day to just. Kick back, relax, and talk with friends. You relax. I mean? so. There ain't a damn thing about you relax before we start a podcast. What are you talking about? There really ain't. There really ain't. <laughs> but once you start the podcast, I'm a little bit. <laughs> You're right on that. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, we are pretty far in on the time. I, I'll just say, uh, if anybody has anything else to bring in, if not, I would say we'll bring up, like, the big leak for today that's absolutely, literally breaking the Internet. Uh, Twitter went down because of it. Yep. Um, oh, good. Like yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's absolutely insane. But no, I, I haven't seen anything. Oh, there's already been there's been the videos taken news. down for copyright infringements yeah. already. Six, there's 67 videos that were in this leak apparently. So 
Uh, GTA 6. GTA 5 is one of the biggest games of all time. Still, it's within the number three top played online game with GTA Online. Um, I, did, I only watched two videos that I saw on it because there's no way I would have had time for all the videos of it just leaking today. But, um, yeah, huge leak on GTA 6, uh, showing a bunch of stuff about the game. Um, videos getting taken down like crazy. Uh, still a ton of videos being able to be accessed through uh, Google and just typing it in. Can't get rid of them all. Um, nope, there's still a no, bunch on YouTube right impossible. now also. That's where I actually watched a couple on YouTube. And uh, a lot of the ones I was watching was really like development video. Uh, where they're showing like characters yeah, walking around yeah. and like shooting guns, and you could tell the world hadn't it didn't have um, like all the graphics turned on. A lot of the, Fleshed lot of the out M- yeah, stuff. exactly. A lot of the NPCs were like blank face characters. Just you could see kind of a character model there, um, but still it did. Early in it, oh yeah, very very still very early. Um, but they did show for a fact that there are two, uh, at least two playable characters, male and female, and it looked like they were possibly like fully customizable because they did show yeah. um, different gender females, and they only showed one gender male or one um, one race male, uh, but they showed multiple race females that you could possibly be. Uh, and it was it, right. It looked pretty cool, man. And apparently, the dude that had leaked this shit is now um, proposing some kind of deal with the company. I right. don't know what the hell he's going to get. I mean, he's going to go to fucking jail. I mean, all everything's source he's code. Going, mark, he's going you know? to jail for sure. Uh, I mean, they, they know who did it. He, they have his source codes and shit. Yeah. So it's like, okay, buddy, you, right. better, you better you better pray they're going to let you off on this one. Uh, you it's know, one of those rock star games. They have unlimited money, bro. <laughs> I guess the, the, the fear is, it's like, all right, you're not going to screw me over or I'm just going to release everything out wide. Right. Maybe. Be Maybe that's what it is. He's like, hey, look, guys, I have everything, okay? So if you want to give me some... He's going to blackmail them. That's what it is. You come after I, me, I, I get arrested, it releases yeah. immediately to everybody. Either that or let me work for the game. <laughs> right. Can you imagine that? Man, the legal issues with that is just a whole thing in itself. I, not my problem. Yeah. Yeah, not my problem either, but I'm mixed on the leak stuff. I think that it's not right for the company's end, but at the same time, it's cool for news topics. I, I can't tell you the coming. amount of I, don't. I can't tell you the amount of news topics that I've covered from leaks for even just Nintendo with Go Nintendo and all the well, different stuff. I, I guess it's different because some of these leaks, I feel like it's a leak, but sometimes like eh, I'm pretty sure the company released this because they want people to talk right. about it, but they didn't want exactly they don't trying want to, to build talk a... about it. Mm-hmm. It's like here, here's little, some stuff you can talk about. This it's a leak. I think that, I, that's what most stuff actually yeah. is. That big Nintendo leak in uh, 2020 that showed, like, uh, Waluigi is a playable character in, like, Super Mario 64 DS. Like, it well, shows some know, Ocarina of Time stuff. Listen, as a person who's been in marketing and stuff like that, I am sick to death. Sitting, I, I'm so sick I want to pull the rest of my fucking hair out when people say, <laughs> this got leaked and this got leaked. And this. No, it's called free fucking marketing. It's right. not leaking at all. No, okay. I if do believe was, a lot know, of that stuff with the GTA 6, once you see the videos, though, a lot of that shit is, right. like, now, that, that's that actual developer different. footage on, like, a on like a work PC. Because yeah, they, they're showing, like, lines right. where, like, you know, character sight lines and shit on it. It's not, like, it's not a flushed out, like, trailer for anything by any means. When, when you actually see a real leak, that's mm-hmm. when you start seeing stuff being taken down, copyright strikes, things like that. Oh, exactly. That's a real leak. Exactly. But whenever you see this other stuff, oh, well, there's a leak on this and there's a leak no. on this. No, it's called free marketing, sweetheart. Yes. It's a leak. It's no, it's not a leak. It's them trying. It's them trying. It's a buzzword. It's like yeah. buzz. That's it. They Building the well buzz. It, yeah. They may as well just there call are, it a press release. Yep. Yeah. There's much. definitely companies that have purposely leaked stuff. There's no and doubt about do that. Purposely. Leak. Yeah. They probably do. I, they probably no, this, do. I will say this shit that for GTA gigantic. Six. That's a that's a massive leak. Like this that's is, a yeah, real there's, leak. There's a yeah. there's a hard line between <laughs> it, the company giving pushing that information and the developer or somebody just getting stuff that's not supposed to be out. And you, mm-hmm. It's pretty you, obvious. You know that Rockstar Games is not going to show out some bait beta no. footage for no the, no no if way. You, if you want to see a real of all time. If you want to see a real oh, leak, God. wait till wait till I go to bed and you'll see me get up fifteen <laughs> times tonight. That's a leak. <laughs> Christ. You know, you know, I, I finally started thing, having man. to do that myself, man. So I think the age is getting to me as well. 
Like, you used to be able to sleep through the whole night, you know, wake up in the morning, do my whole routine, and then finally piss? No, no, no. I'm getting up like 4 o'clock in the morning pissing yeah, and pissing. Like, this is bullshit. Who, uh, come on, you know who started all this bullshit, this leak bullshit? That was Apple back with the iPhone 4. Oh, it was left in a bar. Bullshit. It was... It, yeah, yeah. Oh, we actually <laughs> left it in a bar. No, no, yeah, no. Right. That was planned. Steve yep. Jobs was sitting there going... What yep. can we do? Mm. Thank you, Steve Jobs, the master of marketing. That was what he was a genius yeah. of. He's the master Apple. and king. Of, of, that's That was his baby, and now everybody's running with this leak bullshit. This whole thing with the GTA thing, yeah, that is a leak. That is an honest-to-God yep. leak. And, you know, uh, I, 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 number one is GTA. I'd be curious, but at the same time, if they're going to go woke with it like those other bastards did with Saints Row, Sayonara, I'm done. I've got all I've got oh, all the GTA man. that I could possibly play. I haven't hardly touched GTA five yet. Mm. And I've had to restart Me the neither. son of a bitch three times because I went from one generation to the next and then my system yep. went, uh, went down and then I swapped over so, to another system and I had to restart again. So it's yep. just like you know, I, Tell me how you really feel. The, yeah. the GTA five I take, stuff, I I take. never beat the game even though it's been out for three generations, but I know I'm going to hold off to grab this PS5 version at a sale for a cheap price, mm-hmm. and then I'll probably, maybe I'll finally play through the game. <laughs> I don't know, but I don't care about GTA Online. It whatsoever. is a good story. The good, the story um, mode is I, really good on GTA 5. I'm not going to lie. Like the fact that you can I'm, jump yeah, in, in and I out know. of those four characters, and Trevor to me is one of the best fucking characters in a video game ever. I'm pretty sure Trevor's that's his hilarious. Name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trevor oh, yeah. is I like I, d- I did not realize that they Trevor's. actually based that character off of a real person until I watched The Walking Dead. We were talking about earlier, and yeah. that character is actually in The Walking Dead. I'm watching this TV show with my wife, and I'm like, "Okay, hold on, that dude's familiar." Wait a minute, and then they said yeah, something. He said something. I was like, "Holy shit, it's fucking Trevor from GTA Five!" And then I got looking. I'm like, "It's this like they literally took a picture of him and put him in that fucking yep. game." Like it, well, not only that, he's no, no, he's best uh, character in the game. He's down. the one who voices it. Right, that, that exactly. Very actor is the one who voices it. He's the meth head. Which he's, one's Trevor? He's the meth head that uh, oh, okay. runs the drugs so, and stuff. The yep. Oh, he's, gotcha. He's uh, ne- Negan's uh, second in command. Yeah, and uh, uh, I, I and Walking Dead, he's Negan's about. buddy. Yeah, I did. I got lost. so uh, thrown off with GTA Four. Because the phone would constantly go off from whatever mm. the guy's name was, constantly. Yeah, that Dude, was kind it, of a pain in the ass. What? But um, that I'm DLC Valley of Day Tony is one of the best GTA things I've that ever is. played. That whole yeah. DLC for that was amazing. But yeah, GTA Five. I don't know. Maybe I'm not a real gamer because I haven't beat it. But I I also started no. on PS3. Then I started you on can't... PS4. I also got on Xbox One. Same. Restarted every time. And I'm like. Dude, I've got to finally play through this game, and I know I'll yeah. pick it up for PS5. I'm just waiting for a deal. Well, I'll tell you, I'll I've tell you right on. now. Playing playing the PS4 version on the PS5, the graphics are way better. So like, I can't imagine what yeah. they're gonna do when they release a PS5 version of it. I'm kind of interested to see how good it's gonna look myself. Because if they use like a really good yeah. game engine for it, it's gonna look really amazing. And that, that I might actually be able to sit down and play through it. Allegedly. Yeah, I need. I definitely <laughs> need to. I'll do try that. again, That's rather. A, <laughs> that's a game that's so that's discussed a lot so i feel like i need to like i'm obligated to play through that but yeah i mean i'm Lake demanding stuff, you to play it <laughs> oh, okay mark i'm gonna play through it now the uh Got the leak now. stuff is cool though i mean it's cool but at the same time it's kind of like not cool for the company it's interesting for us to do like news discussions and stuff but we really got a lot of happy stuff so it's like you can't mm-hmm. really tell what this game is going to be. So the leak's kind of like, what am I really getting here? You know? Yeah, I mean, I mean? it's literally You're just getting... development footage. Is all it is a development? Yeah, footage. that's just nothing. There's too there's, early. There's nothing that's going to show what the game is. Like mm-hmm. I, so far, what I saw, there's a lot of videos. But what I've seen shows nothing for what GTA 6 is going to be. So it's mm-hmm. kind of like a, it's a non non-news almost for me but just the fact that it got leaked is like i i really wish that they would do what a lot of people are wanting people you know wanting them to do but they won't do it it's just like hey take us back to vice city and show us today it doesn't have to be with it doesn't have to be with tommy versetti we could have a whole brand new story yeah or you could even hand it off from tommy versetti you know and god rest you know ray liotta (laughs) we could hand it off from from uh 
you know, uh, and we can hand it off to Ray, you know, from Ray Liotta's character onto somebody else and take us back to Vice City. They never take us back to where we want to go. And I'll be honest with everybody no. out there. There's a lot of people who really have a lot of love for San Andreas. I do not. Mm. I, I am I, I don't like the sim part of it. I don't like the fact that you have to eat. You have to work out. You have to do it so you can't get too big. You get too bulked yeah. up. But I do like that you can swim and you're not going to drown now. But you see, I, I've just, I don't like, I can take a little bit of parts of GTA 5 where you actually have um, uh the because you have three different stereotypes going on there. You've got the you know the Italian mobster kind of stereotype. Mm -hmm. You know you you've got you know you've got the gangster stereotype, and then you've got the crazy you know kind of hillbilly stereotype. You know whatever or maybe not even I shouldn't say hillbilly. I have a bunch of relatives who will slap me. <laughs> um, I should say redneck instead. Um, <laughs> there's a difference. But, uh, there is there's a big difference. So but when it comes to that. You know, that hood gangsta stereotype, a whole game full of that. I, I, I couldn't play through it, number one. I, I'm just not into that kind of a thing. And the other thing, I, I couldn't get through four because I couldn't stand the controls of the cars. And there's a lot of yeah. people out there who feel that the controls of the cars, oh, they feel so different, and da 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 and five, mm -hmm. they all feel the same. I disagree. Every last car was sluggish unless in four unless you got hold of, like, like a supercar. And then mm -hmm. you could actually steer it. Uh, it took me out. Yeah. Of the, I, I liked the story that they had going on, but I just I couldn't get through it, just because it, it was so sluggish with the controls. And if they're going to do uh, an update for GTA 4, I hope they give a GTA 5 controls or give you the option to go back and forth between original controls and hmm. like a revamp. But I don't think that they would. Yeah. Right. I don't think that they'll do that because if they drop the ball on the uh, GTA Trilogy Definitive Editions, they uh. dropped it, the ball on that. We don't talk about the definitive yeah. addiction. <laughs> That's wild because, man, the love they could have given to those games that that weren't given. Uh, yeah, two they of the pissed games, all over it. Two of the favorites in my series, and my number one favorite this GTA is game. That's love, is, right? Uh, that yes, uh, is and they've shown zero love to these games. No. But Vice City Stories is my favorite GTA game. And probably like third or fourth would be Liberty City Stories, but those are two mm -hmm. games that have zero love have been given to them. They don't, they aren't that, talked about. Battle of Gay Tony had a really good story, and mm -hmm. I wouldn't play it, it, but I watched it. I watched my best friend play it. Just cause, like I said, I hated the controls of the cars, and it was the best yeah. one of. Uh, yeah, I I think that those two aren't given any love just because they were they were PSP games originally. They were ported to PS2, but right. I feel like that's the reason. Uh, they're just not even like talked about. I don't see them talked about, but I stand behind uh, Vice City stories being my favorite, and I wish they would go back to Vice City. Look, my favorite yeah. thing to do in that was once you've taken over everything, I would like to uh, put in the codes for tanks, and I'd put them out in front of the Bersetti Mansion. So I'd just <laughs> go around shooting everybody and get back in there, and I'd just wait for. I would wait for that thing to get to five stars. I'm like, come on, let's get six. Come on, six stars. You never saw six stars. Everybody's coming after me. Everybody's, it, it was great. It was great. It's just, I just couldn't wait for them to come in and just murder me. And, it, and nice. it would take them hours to even get to me. So that was fun. That was yeah. just good. You could just you know yeah, create your own mayhem. Yeah. You, you know, and that's, that's kind of where the original Saints Row started as well. Like, it was, it was more of that nature of a game where it was like, you know, it's GTA, but with more of that chaos. You right, know, a constant chaos instead of like a little bit of chaos and then everything settles back down. It was more of like a, this is like just a crazy game all the way through, and then they kind of ramped it up and ramped it up, and then they just completely killed it. Well, in the my one opinion. the one thing that was really cool about GTA Five was there's there's a lot there's there's so much that you can do in there mm -hmm. that you that I mean you can go play golf, you can, right? You know. You know, you, you can. It's go a lifestyle. I mean, it's it's literally a yeah. sim game in a real game. Like, I mean, you can you and, can play it as but, a sim simulation if you want. But causing chaos, going around, driving around, shooting people, doing whatever—that's the bread and butter of the game, really. Not the missions, not going online, but finding different ways to do things. Because mm -hmm. my son did something, and I watched. He goes, "Here, watch this. Come here, come here, come here." And it's like, but well, we had, you know, we didn't have the game that long at that time. And I sat down, and he got on one of the trains in, inside of one of the, the cars that you could, you know, like a, like a coal car or something. You yeah. could kind of hunker down in there. 
and he'd have the sniper rifle. So he'd be like going by some streets or something. He'd just start shooting people. <laughs> and then you'd have helicopters and cop cars trying to follow him and stuff. So it was kind of like Versetti Mansion on a train. Nice. And almost nobody could take him out. It was fucking hilarious. And to this day, I've never done it myself. But if I'm, if, if I'm ever in the same room with Cameron and I've got GTA on, I go, here you go. Do it. Just... Hop in there real quick. Show cool. me. I and mean, yeah, that's the good thing. Start. That's the good thing about the story mode is like you can do stuff like that and then just kind of restart it. You know, you're not losing anything. But you try to do some shit yeah. like that online, you know, your character is going to be broke as hell because you're going to get killed and lose all your money because people are and doing right. that shit to you. And that's yeah. the thing I like liked about the writing in GTA Five too. Because what was the gangster character? Was his name? Fra- was it Franklin? Was that his Franklin. name? Franklin. No. No. Uh, no. Uh, Mike. Arthur? Michael. Right. Michael. Right. Mike. Okay. Maybe. Michael. No, no Michael, Mike, Michael. Michael was the uh, Italian guy. No, I thought it was Franklin, but is it Franklin? Oh, it is Franklin. I thought, I thought yeah. Franklin was an older game. It's been thought, a while. Yeah. I was thinking uh, Arthur, yeah. but I think I'm thinking of Red Dead Redemption too. <laughs> his, his character <laughs> was really very well game. written. His character was very well written, and it wasn't it wasn't so stereotypical, right. you know, gangster style and. That's what I, I I liked playing his character, um, but that's how come I couldn't get in. I don't even know the name of the character in San Andreas. I couldn't get into it. Mm. Yeah, um, I didn't beat San Andreas, but I did play it. I got it when it came out. Uh, I thought it was fine, but it wasn't Vice City for me. Right. right. I don't have an issue with like the the characters, like the way the things were. I don't know. Just didn't get into it like Vice City for me personally. That wasn't. Like I do have the hot coffee version. Style. Yeah, that's the best. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's a it's a fine game, but it's just definitely not my favorite. So I, I can agree with you, Scott, for sure. It's armor room now. Yeah. It's nice. um, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, was that there for real? <laughs> for real. Is there any um, news topics you guys can think of that? We hadn't mentioned or anything. It wasn't thrown in. I know we had a lot. This was a uh, large was episode thing, for us tonight. There's one thing that's been going around on on YouTube the past couple of days. Uh, G4 has uh, been laying off a bunch of people Ooh, because yes. the G4 channel going that. bye bye. And I, I, you know, and of course, you know that 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 woman or girl who's the on meltdown the caller, Frosk Frosk. I'm gonna call uh, it the melt. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call that person the meltdown. The meltdown, yeah. Um, the, she had a meltdown. She was big time. What happened? You, di- you didn't hear about that? Oh god, no, I don't know what happened. No. Bro, please go watch off. that video. It was sad. Yeah, why she, have I not heard about this? She compares just, herself just to fucking Morgan, rant. bro. She's she's like she's like everybody wants to fuck Morgan, but nobody wants to fuck me. Is Where's basically what I got me? out of the whole thing. Yeah, you know, I'm, it was so yeah, bad. I'm not dude. as doable as the last host, so that's how yeah, I can I see mean, you guys hey. in the chat and and sexism in gaming. And then there's Adam Sussler sitting there doing this seal. This seal was, man, she was she was a good looking woman. That's all I can say about that. that. It, was, it was it was a it was a pretty it, crazy a rant one. though. Like you could uh, basically just, see yeah. you could see the downward spiral of that show from that exact a- fucking after moment. After that, I've never watched it when it relaunched. I haven't watched With, anything. It there's, was decent. Number, it was decent. Number, uh, it was decent until then. And yes. then after that, after that day, half of, of their subscribers went bye-bye. And then within two months, the very same people went completely hypocrite and then had, uh, what was her name? Um, uh, I forget her name. She uh, starts with an A. Anyway, she's a really hot girl. and was she's Alana? Bikini. Alana? Uh, no, Maybe. you're close, though. Uh, okay. our, I forget her name. If, if, if you somebody said it, I would know it. Somebody in the chat, go ahead and <laughs> yeah. you know, drop that name. Tell us what her name is. Uh, but um, she was in this pit, ball pit, and she was talking about blue balls and all kinds of stuff. And she came out, oh, and she yes. was like, she was in this really teeny tiny bikini, and they were doing they were doing the complete opposite of what this frost chick was saying. And on top of that, yeah. the president of the company even said, "See ya!" Within like a month, he was like. Well, time for me to go. Yep, he All knew the it was rats coming. were jumping ship. So then this week, they, HR starts taking about, because they had about 60 people on staff or 70. Yeah. Took about took about 30 or 40 of them and let them all go and said, sayonara, because yep. we just can't afford you anymore. We don't have anybody. 
you know, we don't have we, we don't have anybody watching. And um, right. then this Frost chick, she actually put out a tweet that said, um, oh, what was it? It was very tone deaf. It said something like, oh, uh, I survived. Or in other words, it was like, uh, all, all these people I used to work with, they all got axed, but I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's, it's a mess. Yeah. The relaunch. She so, is hot an mess. absolute she is an absolute piece of trash, this person. I'm, I'm putting saving it for right after this. I'm going to watch it. I, you should. Yeah, I knew about the playoffs, but I haven't. Like I said, I have not seen a single there is a There is a single moment of why all that started to happen, and that was her fucking rant. And that was it. From today. <laughs> it says Frost Blast YouTube has well, meltdown over neck beards. Hey, see, like, see, that's, that's going to the be thing. their stick. That's going to be that person's right. stick. They're just going to have meltdowns and get famous. Right, right. It's not, I'm get... not the problem. The audience is well, she... the problem. Exactly. Okay, so I don't know how. Hello, know Mir. How, how like, are you? It is about. Yeah, right. I know you've got to be very PC these days. No, the fuck you don't. You don't have to. No, she lo- she, I'm not. She looks like somebody that would have a meltdown. I mean, I don't know if that's <laughs> bad to say, but yes. just looking at her, you know what I mean? You can definitely tell she's. She's a lefty. Like I don't know how to say it without being, because I'm not. On you can't. Side. You can't say politics. it without being no. one way or the other these days, and it's stupid because like it's an opinion. It's your personal opinion on what you think of that person. Yeah. I don't give a shit. Like and, I don't. Right, I, don't I don't think that person should be on fucking on famous on anything. Uh, Welcome no. to modern day politics. Yeah, it just she looks like somebody that would have a meltdown. I don't. Looks you know definitely like like I said I'm not on either side of the politics stuff, but definitely on the left. I don't know. Well, say it. for well, sure, if, meltdown person. If you want to, uh, hopefully, if my plans are my Halloween show, you want to see me have some fun with Frost, watch my Halloween show. <laughs> oh, shit. I'll be, we'll oh, be tuning nice. in for sure. We'll be tuning in. Man, totally. <laughs> Braxton, Braxton said, uh, so we got, we got Braxton in the chat. He said, whoa, politics and video yeah. games. Glad he poured his vodka root beer strong. Oh, you bring it up there. <laughs> I missed everything. Yeah, I bring it up really what, bad. What, what did he say? <laughs> I oh, didn't hear anything. Let so. me try again. He said, uh, whoa, politics and video games. Glad I poured my vodka root beer strong. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you an Adam Sussler. There you go. Yeah. Well, oh, hey, sometimes. thanks for Braxton for jumping in. I was just talking to him, but uh, yeah, I mean, if, um, you guys got anything else to throw in? Anything I think that's good? about it. I think we're good yeah, on the I, night, bro. Isn't that three hour? All right, man. I I enjoyed having a longer podcast. I love it. Bother me? Yeah, with long, long, long long form conversation long form. is always the best in my opinion. Yes, I agree, and, and just being more natural and throwing whatever out there. No need to it's rush cool to through anything, but we. Yeah, we just kind of went off on tangents, and I like that. That's the best way to do it for me. So, all right. Well, um, I don't have anything else. So, appreciate everybody watching. Appreciate all you guys being on. Before we being close part out, of the team and just having fun. Before we close out, like any, anybody in the chat, comment and subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe. Go to wenergy.com. Use code Game Junction One for ten percent off your first order. Yay, Dubby. How, how dare I forget to even mention any? <laughs> We're learning. Hey, it's only episode six. We're getting into it. But yeah, check so out W for sure. Uh, I and nice welcome me, to our newest guest. I ordered me four different energy uh, powders that I have out in the kitchen. Nice. I've tried three of them. They're excellent. They're, I mean, definitely they get, they're good price and uh, I like them. I mean, they work for me. So uh, definitely check that out, Game Junction One, like you said, and uh, we'll and see you guys what, all next Sunday. Go ahead. Well, I I, I want to th- throw out a shameless plug for my YouTube channel. Yeah. Look up Game Closet Retro. Of course, everything I do is uh, video games, but is video games with comedy. So if you want there a good go. laugh, come check out Game Closet Retro. Check out the latest it's stuff, there. and uh, I'm always doing something crazy on there or something different. You're not going to see the same old stuff that you see on some of these other channels, so check me out. No, you, nice. you definitely offer some variation. I watch, I've definitely. watched every video you put out for past several months. Thank so you. You're doing a good job. You Everybody have a great night. night. Yeah, you all have a great night. Appreciate all the viewers, and we'll be back next Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Right, guys. Peace. All right. Cheers. Yeah.